traders coming on to teach us uh, different aspects of trading. Uh, today's guests are Anka Metcalf, Trade Out Loud, Sonny Harris with Sonny Harris Enterprises, Larry Gaines from Power Cycle Trading, and Paul Lang from Discipline Trading Strategies, LLC. Guys, this is going to be a great day. Uh, I put up four points on the Go to webinar sheet when you sign up for it. One is, and I try to take one from each speaker. And our points today that I thought were really um, compelling was what style, and have you ever considered this? What style of trading suits your lifestyle? Um, practical approaches to increasing your hourly wage while you're trading. Um, from Larry, we've got the aha moment, a little known option defense that will change your trading performance and reduce your trading stress, which I'm sure is going to be a huge help to everyone. And then the key things that you should focus on when you are developing your trading habits and your trading strategies. So please check out tradersexclusive.com. That's where we regularly post articles and video clips with valuable trading tips and techniques. And then this is also where you're going to find a recording of today's webinar. And before we get started, you know what has to happen next. We get the disclaimer. So you should carefully consider whether trading is suitable for you in light of your circumstances, knowledge, and financial resources. Always bear in mind you could lose all or more of your initial investment. Opinions, market data, and recommendations presented on our webinars are subject to change at any time. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Please take notes. And most of our speakers like for you to hold your questions until they're done with their presentation. Uh, but I do like to check with them so that we would be able to um, let them have full uh, interaction with everybody. So I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Anka Metcalf of Trade Out Loud LLC. She's going to bring a presentation called Generate an Income Trading Only Two Hours Per Day. Wow. And so um, Anka is a professional futures and equities trader market analyst and expert commentator with 20 plus years of trading experience. She's the founder and CEO of TradeOutLoud.com, an international trading education and service company. She's an expert day trader, swing trader, and active investor with a precise approach to daily income style trading and wealth generation trading, delivering results in any market environment. The strategy she teaches in her courses and her live daily approach to trading provide you with the understanding and the tools to take your trading to the next level. She personally manages her own accounts and shares her market knowledge and trades every day with her clients worldwide. She's a contributor to many financial media outlets. Welcome, Anka. I really appreciate you being here with us. Let me see. I think I might have. Yes. All right. I have just good unmuted afternoon, you. Mary, and good afternoon, everyone. And thank you so much for having me here today. Well, I appreciate you coming. Now, question. Do you like to ask questions and see the answers? Or do you like the questions to be held until you're done? Um, preferably until I'm done. But if someone really has a pressing question, I could take a look at the chat box and uh, I'll just answer the question on the spot. OK. <laughs> then. I I'm going to keep it the way it is, and what I do is um, um, go to webinar setup so that when a question comes in, I can assign it to you, and then it becomes visible to you so that you don't get Perfect. a lot of disruption. All right, sounds fantastic. Have a great one. I'm going to just back out now. You wanted, take it away. Yeah, I just wanted to check. Do I have 45 minutes? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much, Sherry. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. All right, so um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, please excuse my voice. I'm from a back cold. Of, I just I, I had COVID and I still have that lingering cough. It's not too bad and uh, it's really getting better, uh, but it's still there. So if I don't hit the mute button in time, please excuse my coughing. All right, so for today, uh, I have prepared a presentation for you. If you guys are just dabbing into trading, or if you have been trading for a while, but spinning your wheels, I'm gonna bring a different perspective because I know everybody is so stock oriented or options oriented, not a lot of traders in futures. So 
I'm going to bring you uh, the futures market today, and I'm going to share with you why I moved to the futures market about nine years ago, because I was just like everybody else, day trading stocks, swing trading stocks, investing in stocks, everything else in stocks. And I wasn't actually diversified into futures. And uh, actually, it was my accountant that um, that pointed out that futures may be a good option because of the uh, taxes. So it literally rang, by, rang a bell and I started looking into futures. I applied the same strategy that I have already, uh, that I was already applying into stocks. And then I developed a keener edge because futures is a totally different ball game than stock trading. So I'm gonna talk to you today a little bit about futures trading and about how you can produce uh, literally a six to seven figure income. I will show you our stats and uh, I will show you again where you can go to see all our stats, the good, the bad, and the ugly, all the traits. All right, so today's presentation is creating a six to six, seven figure income, trading, six, uh, trading two hours a day, trading the New York trading session two hours and done. This is what I do. This is what I have been uh, specializing in within the last nine to 10 years. And uh, we, I have developed a course around this system that enables you to trade just two hours a day to focus. Now, as you know, the human brain cannot literally concentrate uh, more than an hour at a time before it goes on a commercial break. Because let's face it, you guys are gonna be here into a presentation and easily you can distract, you easily you can get distracted uh, let's say from 15 minutes, 20 minutes, or 30 minutes, because it's human nature. If you go and browse something, you go on Facebook, or you go on Twitter, or you just read an email, or you just look out the window, it's human nature. So I developed a system to unchain yourself from the desk, from the computer, and trade only two hours and give it your best. So trade your way to financial independence in 2022. So what is your goal for 2022? If you have been spinning your wheels, uh, and have been trading incons uh, inconsistently through 2021 or 2020. If you didn't take the massive opportunity that 2020 market offered, now's the time to get back into the market. Uh, the market is always going to have some chop into it. This is the nature of the market. 90% of the time, or let's say 85% of the time, the market is moving you know, into a good directional bias, whether higher or lower, but at some inflection points, it becomes choppy, whether it's the narrative or whether the technical. So it's normal what we're having right now into the market. Uh, it's easier to get started when the market is rough than when the market is trending, because you're gonna learn a lot more in a choppy market than you would into an uptrending market or a downtrending market. So definitely in a trading market. So how can you get started working on your goal? Well, you could get started working on your goal by attending these kinds of webinars and try to find your niche. What is it that you really like? Is it my presentation with futures? Is it another presentation with stocks? Is it another presentation with options? So you have to find uh, your calling into this and what resonates with you because you really have to love what you're doing. So do you have an action plan? Do you have a blueprint? Definitely for everything that you need to do in life, you need to have an action plan and you need to have a blueprint. An architect is not gonna start building your house uh, until he comes up with a good blueprint to get to uh, the contractor, right? To give to the engineer to build, uh, to build that house. So volatility is very high and will remain high through 2022. And you if you have been trading futures, you will notice that the setups are pretty wide. Uh, there is a way to go around that. Ukraine war or not, okay. FOMC raising rates or tapering. I mean, there are rumors that we're going to uh, get rate hikes uh, in March. <laughs> Inflation, are we going to get like hyperinflation? This will be decided as we move along through 2020, still very early to the turban. And these are just some things that are gonna influence the market and midterm selection. So from these just four points here, uh, letting alone, uh, you know, and leaving on the sidelines all the economic data that is gonna come out, all the earnings that are gonna come out, we're in full swing earnings season. These are some things that are gonna shake the market and really shape the market, really reshape the market. 
Uh, before we get started, I want to remind everybody that Trade Out Loud has been nominated, the uh, na have been named, not nominated, has been named the Benzinga overall winner out of 400 distinguished companies revolutionizing fin fintech. So there we are, there we are right now, right here with our name, Trade Out Loud, and we are the winner. Now I want to get back to um, how much money you can make. Okay, so trading futures in two hours or less. I have a very transparent portfolio. I trade live every single day with my traders. I am in the trading room. I call the trade out with the entry, with a stop, with a target, and I do what nobody does. I trail into targets. One of the hardest things into trading is how you trail. Uh, depending on your trailing system, you will determine whether a trader is just talk blah 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 or if it's a real trader okay so the trailing system is one of the most complicated systems uh, in existence uh for trading because you don't want to take your profits too soon you don't want to hit boom, boom target i'm taking all my cash out and then you're seeing uh the price soaring higher for example if you were long you have to let the market uh, take you out and you have to have a really good system for that and we do we actually have three ways to trail in January 2022, we just closed a month. We had a total of 30, uh, uh, oops, this is a mistake right here. This is, a, oh yeah, no, 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 sorry. We had a total of 32 trades. Uh, we had uh, 23 winners and we have nine losers in a month like January. Uh, usually, usually on a month like this, if you go to other traders and if you see the portfolios, it is upside down. You're having probably nine winners and probably 23 losers, but not us. We know when to sit on cash. We know how to do capital preservation and we don't trade a lot. The secret to uh, successful trading is to trade less. Uh, I specialize, like I said, I have, I have my own system that I deploy every single morning into the market. For example, today I didn't take any trades. However, uh, when I wrapped up the trading room, because I had to get ready for this presentation, I gave one more trade out, and that was the Dow futures over 305, cold targets all the way to 400, where it is trading right now into the 400. Boom, just like that. So you can see that in trading, you have to wait before you actually take some action. So the win ratio is 72%. It's actually uh, low because I usually get 80 to 85% win ratio. And uh, if you're wondering what does that mean for your portfolio, if you have traded and if you took all the trades, all the trades that I call, and not many trades, total of 32 trades, you can see it right here, with only one contract, you would have made 20, uh, over $25,000 per contract, over $25,000 per contract. We still have a trade that we haven't closed. Uh, that's why I'm saying approximately $25,000 because we're still in lean hawks, okay? And that is a swing trade. This is futures trading in two hours or less. And again, the results are per contract, per contract. And this is all last year. You can see the performance from last year, total of $161,000. And if you're wondering how much money do I need to trade all this, if you don't want to position size, if you don't want to you know, go through uh, you know, hoops and anything like that. You could have an account of $50,000, carbon copy the performance. If you're trading a smaller account size, you could still do it. You could trade micros. Obviously, you can position size to your account size and you could have very similar results. These are results from 2020. And in fact, if you go to uh, our website and if you go under services, under the trading room, you will see our performance from 2016 or 2017. And it's all right there. Everything's very transparent. Win ratio in 2020 was over 80%, 80%. One of our biggest months was March. And actually, March was the most volatile month of the year, okay, in 2020. All right, so welcome, everyone. My name is Anka Metcalf. I'm the CEO and founder of TradeOutLoud.com. I've been trading professionally futures and equities for the last 19 years. And uh, I have been in investment banking for 10 years. And... Uh, uh, I'm the founder and CEO of TradeOutLoud.com, which is a trading education firm that is specialized in educating individuals how to day trade, swing trade, the futures and the equities market. 
what I focused on is price support resistance, but I focused on confluence areas within price support resistance, so not just supply and demand. There are inflection points within these uh, uh, areas that allow me to find high odds trades, odds uh, of 75 to 80% in my favor or in the directional bias favor. I also uh, have developed specific trigger times, and these are coming from stocks because this is something that I took from my stock trading into day trading. You're not going to find these anywhere on the internet. These are proprietary to my method from 20 years of trading. Have you ever noticed that there are times throughout the day when uh, you actually find a setup that is really juicy, nice, and you take it and you're in the trade, it triggers for you, and then just in a couple of minutes or a few minutes, the trade turns around and it turns negative on you and it stops you out. How many times has that happened to you guys? Well, I could tell you a lot of times and that is because you're not in sync with the market momentum and with the market dynamics. And once you learn where these specific trigger times are, and these are applicable not only to futures, but to stocks, if you're day trading stocks as well, you're doing options, these are key trigger times into the market. Also uh, teach specific price zones. This I cannot take credit for. Uh, I stole this from one of my mentors, institutional trader. There are specific price zones where institutional traders leg in, so scale in and scale out. So I teach these as well. Um, I also teach uh, chart synchronicity and divergency because it's very important uh, at a point in time where you're having a troubled market um, and when you're seeing, especially in earnings season, uh, when you're seeing a lot more dynamic, for example, in NASDAQ, and then you're seeing a lack of participation in Russell, so the market is divergent. So for example, if you have an index that has relative weakness and you have two or three indices that are um, uh, strong, uh, then you have to assess which index you're going to be trading because basically you, if you're a day trader, futures day trader, you're going to focus more uh, on what you're going to be trading uh, on that day, on the symbol that you're going to be trading. And you only have four. So there, there you go. You don't need a scanner. You don't need anything else. Uh, and again, I specialize in high velocity moves. I sit and wait just like a sniper until the price comes into my location to take the trade. If you guys want to get a hold of us, you can visit our website or the handle trade out loud on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or LinkedIn. So in today's presentation, obviously we're going to talk about stocks versus futures. I love both, but I day trade futures for tax purposes and I still swing trade and invest in stocks. And in fact, this week we had a phenomenal week. Uh, in uh, our um, in our um, uh, stock swing trader program because we had massive follow through. One of the trades that we had was Netflix that soared into targets. We actually trailed at 440. We had it really early on on a really tight uh, daily rotation. It was just a fantastic trade. And all the trades that we have this week are working beautifully. Throughout the month of January in the swing program, guess what, guys? We only had two trades that stopped out. Uh, and I think we had about 20, 25 trades or so. And uh, I mean, only two trades stopped out. I mean, this is incredible. All right, another thing that we're gonna be trading is about income producing strategies and uh, wealth generation strategies. But before we get there, in order to start trading, if you're here for the very first time and say, hey, I wanna learn how to trade and I wanna make trading my career, uh, don't get in trading for the wrong reasons. Don't think that everybody that gets in trading uh, makes it in trading because in fact, you know, just 90, just 3% of traders make it in trading. And that's, that's the truth. 97% 97% of the traders fail. Uh, they fail for, di for different reasons. They got in for the wrong reasons. They don't know how to position size. They don't know anything about trading. They don't have education. So they don't have a lot of things and they just throw money into the market. Now, let me remind you that in this market, you're just trading with or without some of the brilliant minds and uh, you're trading with expert traders with algorithms. They know what they're doing. We don't, right, as retail traders uh, or beginner traders have no idea. A trader that just daps into the market, opens an account and say, hey, poof, I'm just going to buy, I don't know, Apple or whatever. So first of all, you have to have a really burning desire. How much do you really want to make trading work for you? The other thing is that you need to have uh, education. And I'm not just talking about, hey, I need to learn some, uh, supply and demand, you know, support resistance. I need to learn uh, trends and I'm going to wing it. No, you need to know 
uh, about trading from A to Z. You need to have discipline to follow your plan. You need to have a trading plan when you're trading. If you don't have a trading plan, just shut off your computer. There's, you don't have a right to be here because your obligation is to develop a little trading plan. You don't need to write novels, but just write what you're looking for in the market. First of all, you know, start with the hours that you have available for you. Depending on the hours that you have available, adjust them with your time frame. Because if you're, for example, an evening trader, you know, futures market is open close to 24 hours. So, for example, if you're looking for trades at nine o'clock or 10 o'clock in the evening, uh, you have to make sure that you know what time frame to look at because each time frame is different. So, for example, if you're a morning trader, you uh, trade uh, very small time frames. And as you move along through the day from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, you move to a different time frame. And then from 12 o'clock through two o'clock, you move to a totally different time frame, and then you zoom in again. But again, it's all about adjusting the time frame and adjusting because that's where the setups are coming from. Uh, you need to have patience to wait for the opportunity. You don't have the patience, no patience, no money. It's very simple in trading. Focus, no distractions. So there's no phone, no internet, no nothing. It could be like a blizzard outside, or it could be like a thunderstorm or whatever. Just, uh, you know, just focus on your trading. There's no distractions, no distractions, no phones, no doors that are opening. No, I got to go, you know, uh, take my dog out. No, it's just you and trading because it's only two hours, guys. You're only trading two hours. That's your work day. Um, and you need to have conviction when you're trading. You need to be sure. Yes, I'm taking the trade here because this, this and that. Uh, and you need to be perseverant. I don't believe in uh, 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 breaks into the market so uh for example if you're um trading and if you begin this career look at charts daily even if you're on vacation i am not kidding you so look on your phone you need to keep in touch with price action and what price action is doing all right so you can create an income from home depending on your account size anywhere from 500 dollars on an average to about five thousand dollars on an average and of course these are depending on depending on your account size can you make more than that yes can you make less than that yes um the main ingredient here is to have like very small losses and you could see in my portfolio that we literally have very small losses when we have losses and that we have a great amount of winners in our portfolio so the winners are literally overriding those little losers you can have break-even trades uh as well break-even trades are fine uh and of course you can, you're gonna have home runs right like big winners uh so uh trade futures for a living this is what i do so i specialize in this day trading only two hours a day it's not that con it's not that consuming uh you still have time for your other activities if you have a hobby if you have another job uh, so this definitely can fit into anybody's lifestyle. Uh, I trade with the institutional money flow. So I trade in sync with them. I don't follow them because following means chasing. I focus on high velocity moves for high rewards. So usually when my price get triggers and it, it just, it just swishes into target. Um, day trading from 9 30 to about 11 30 at 11 30 the london session closes i don't have very little interest into the market uh, it's, uh but today and yesterday uh, i highlighted uh i highlighted one aspect of the market uh because we had digestion days yesterday we had a digestion day before the explosion higher and today we had a digestion day before the market exploded higher so be very careful because if you're having a choppy uh a choppy day don't trade the chop don't trade it, just move along, do something else, you know, go over a walk, come back. And if the market conditions are different and they're pointing out a really good, reliable trade, take it. If it's chop and you have to be able to recognize the chop, that's one of the most important things. Uh, so my main focus is four charts. Uh, I trade the uh, M&E Dow, S&P, NASDAQ and Russell on a day to day to day basis. Do I trade all four of them? No, I trade only one. Sometimes when the market is dynamic, I could take two or three trades, but when the market is the way it is right now, I just take one or two. Uh, I deploy precise strategies at specific times and locations. I, uh, I apply simplified management, so I let the market take me out. I don't take myself out of trade. I don't. So I let them, I have a trailing system that I apply and I let the market take me out. 
And of course you have a limited income, right? Because whether you're a morning trader or an evening trader or a lunch trader, there's always a market for you. You're gonna see here that in this chart, we have some levels, right? That are very simple to follow. Very, very simple to follow. These, this is something that I teach in my class. These cannot be reproduced as an indicator. Eddie, I've tried a lot, but these are institutional price point zones. Okay, now I'm pretty sure you know that there's no average in trading. What happens if you're average in trading? Well, it's not very much, right? Uh, you're a break-even trader, maybe you lose a little, you know, but you, you can't make money, you can't pay the bills. You're either great at trading or you're a loser. That's what trading is all about. So how do you work on becoming great, okay? Well, first of all, deciding the market, whether it's the stock market or the futures market. I love to day trade the futures market because for me, it's an income-producing style of trading. What does income producing style of trading mean for me? Income producing style of trading means that I'm getting in and out of the market within the same day. So I'm basically, I don't hold positions for a very long time when I'm day trading. So probably I would say anywhere from about, let's say two to three minutes to about 15 minutes uh, or 30 minutes at the most in case the market hits some kind of uh, resistance and by trailing, you know, I'm forced to stay in the trade. Uh, but other than that, you know, that's the trade duration. And basically your work day is going to be like 15 minutes the, the rest of the day. And it's totally stress-free because you learn how to trace those levels and you execute the trade at those levels. So it's literally no stress, literally no stress. I wouldn't do it if, uh, if it would be stressful. I wouldn't do it at all. Uh, so these are the markets that you can trade in general. I also do swing trading. So swing trading or wealth, genera wealth generation uh, but swing trading is typically holding a position anywhere from about two days to about two weeks, depending on the market environment. Uh, we had trades long in uh, corn from last year, from November. I just trailed out of corn at uh, 620, massive profits into it. Um, uh, soybeans, I have, I'm still in soybeans, natural gas, copper. These are some of the commodities that you can trade, gold as well. Uh, so there are a lot of markets that you can trade. Um, very profitably <laughs> okay uh and with really and with the odds in your favor that's the most important thing all right so i was talking earlier about uh institutional trigger levels this is what you can expect uh when you join our program whether um you know if you decide to join our trading room you're going to see these charts you're going to see charts like these uh with levels very very clearly noted bullish above wide support area below and you can see I posted here that we have a wide support area below because of the volatility, the price went from 30 all the way to the 4280 here and it danced around before it proved that it could go, uh, that it could go higher. And actually this was a buy point for us back then when I have the chart uh, with the resistance here, so profit target here, so that bullish above um, is also a profit target eased out of the trade and then continuation higher. So all of these uh, elements are going to help you. We all we teach how to trace these levels. They're very easy to trace. I do them. Uh, I do. I create these levels every single day in the trading room. It takes me about five minutes to do that. So what is trading? Trading is a rule-based system. You have to have rules in order for uh, your trading and to create your trading system. Uh, in order to be successful, you need to first of all you need to have a system and the second thing you need to make it very simple because it's, if it's complicated you're not going to going to follow it it has to be that simple that if you write your trading plan and if you give it to your neighbor your neighbor would be able to trade that easy uh you have to find high odds trades and high odds trades you find if you have really good knowledge of technical analysis and of course uh, the timing into the market that i was talking about earlier and you need to wait for the setup to form. Today, we didn't have a setup. Like I said, the only setup that I saw was after I shut down the trading room to jump into this uh, webinar right here uh, into the indices for breakouts. And you need to have fine and precise executions. You don't wing um, entries. You have to have a really clear entry level. So the price, the entry price is the entry price is not negotiable. The stop price is the stop price is not negotiable and a target area as well. You need to know how to react into targets. Uh, also trading is money management skill. Position sizing is very important because in volatile markets, you're gonna have really wide stops. So for example, if I call a trade right now in NASDAQ based on the one hour or 15 minute, you're gonna see that the trade is gonna have about a 100 point stop. Now, 
the only way, and some uh, some traders are freaking out when they hear like, oh my God, a hundred point stop in NASDAQ, that's, that's cray cray. No, it's not cray cray because that is the stop that is not dictated by myself. I don't invent stops. I just read the market and read exactly what the market is telling me to do. So if that points out to a hundred point stop, uh, you have to position size, determine your, I mean, take a look at your account size, see how much money you have in your account, determine if, uh, how much risk you're going to apply per trade, whether it's going to be one or two or 3% or whatever. Uh, and uh, then see the amount of contracts that you can fit into your size. If you can't fit any, guess what? You skip the trade. It's that simple, stress free. And then if you, for example, have a smaller account, and say, hey, yeah, I could take this with micros. I could take this instead of taking it with full size contract because I'm exceeding my position size for the day. You know what? I'm going to take three micros because that is my proper position sizing. But you don't have to know how to position size. Uh, so why futures? You could take out a position with these. You don't have an uptick rule. You have the advantage of buying power that I'm going to show you in a little bit. Uh, and you have really reliable, uh, you have reliable buying power and uh, volume. Uh, you have uh, basically you're trading major markets, you're trading the Dow, you're trading NASDAQ. When you're looking at NASDAQ, you have 100 stocks under it. You're trading the S&P, you have 500. You're trading stocks, you're trading the Dow, you have 30. You're trading Russell, you have 2,000. So you're trading massive market activity. Uh, income producing, like I said, you're in the trade a couple hours and done. Uh, you're out by the end of the day. Uh, you're uh, in the trade in and out by the end of the day. Wealth generation means that you're committed to that trade at least two to three years or five years. Swing trading, you're in that trade from about two days to about two weeks. You have different take values and price ranges, so you can determine the market that you're trading. For example, uh, point in Dow is about five is five dollars. In S and P, it's fifty. In Russell, one point is fifty, and in Nasdaq, is twenty. Uh, like I said, you could trade. You could have a small account of five thousand dollars, and you can trade minutes. We, uh, I've had a trader. Uh, he's still with us. Uh, two years ago, he signed up with us. Uh, he uh, actually joined us in our class, and then he's still in the trading room. And he was trading. Um, he was trading uh, uh, minis because he opened an account with fifty five hundred dollars. Uh, first month, obviously, it was a really good year because he joined in 2020. His first month, uh, he was up $8,000 uh, in one month. In his first month, he was up $8,000 uh, trading minis, okay, and micros. Um, you don't need to use a scanner because you're basically having a really narrow market. Uh, you don't need any special indicators. You have plethora of tax advantages for those of you that are in the uk or in europe you have massive tax advantages just look into futures trading uh here in the us you have the 60 40 rule you have very simplified uh, reporting at the end of the year it is safe from rumors uh, no manipulation no downgrades no upgrades and it is a 24-hour market uh first of all the account minimum to oh uh, if you want to day trade stock the account minimum is about twenty five thousand dollars and you have to have at least thirty thousand because if you lose if you have 25k and you lose a penny your day trading status is at the door but in futures market as long as you have sufficient cash in your account to cover the margin requirements you could still have like $800 in your account and you could still trade Russell or the Dow or NASDAQ. That's a huge advantage. So I'm going to show the uh, advantages, the power of the buying power advantages between the queues, for example, and between NASDAQ futures. So for example, if a trader wants to buy the queues at 365, uh, you need a buying power of uh, about $14,000, $15,000 to buy 100 shares. And if the price goes up 50 cents, obviously you make $50 because each cent is a dollar. But if the trader wants to buy the mini micro, mini um, the mini Nasdaq priced at fifteen thousand dollars, the trader needs about seventeen thousand dollars to buy one contract, and that is still because of the volatility and the pandemic uh, conditions. So if the price goes up fifty points, that's going to be a thousand dollars. But remember, your risk per trade is going to be the same. So if you risk five hundred dollars on a Q's trade, or if you risk five hundred dollars on a Nasdaq trade, right? You get it. So your risk is the same. All right, so let me show you this uh, on charts, right? So for example, you have here, uh, you know, a breakout, yada, yada, yada. Anyways, the trade trigger long, you can see we bought 100 shares uh, of the queues. You can see the buying power here, 16,000. We're talking about buying power, not strategy right now. 
So buying power, 16,000, we accommodated a hundred shares in that $16,000. And we were up $237 in about 20 minutes, 20 minutes, right? That's, that's the average time duration for a day trade. Now, we bought the same NASDAQ. We bought one contract. We, have, like I said, $17,000, very, I mean, almost the same buying power, but we're up $2,000. The risk is the same. We, you, we applied a risk of about $500 on this trade, $500 on this trade. So if you can see here the difference, right? One contract, you made $2,000. In the queues, 100, uh, 100 shares, you made $237. One other thing. Those traders that have smaller accounts say, "Hey, I don't have a, I don't stand a chance. I mean, can I really make money with the, uh, with minis or micros? Yes, this is the micro, uh, mini Nasdaq, which is tenth of the size of full size contract, and we use the same strategy to apply. We bought, we bought all of these three tickers at the same time. The trade duration, 20 minutes on all of them. So this is the result for 20 minutes of trading activity." You're going to see it right here. The buying power is $1,700. Wow. One contract, and here it is, $181. And the last time I checked, that's about 5%, right? 5 or 10% of, um, of $5,000, right? Do you know how much hedge funds uh, yield at the end of the year? 7 to 8% per year. And we do that in a trade, okay? So I trade the sweet spot, like I said, from 9.30 to about 11.30 because I love the overlap of the London session with a New York trading session. There are specific times of the day when the market has a certain rhythm. The market opens at 9.30, it either moves up or down. So let me explain to you how that looks. These are morning patterns that work about 80% of the time. If you take a snapshot of this and you're gonna see what I'm talking about. Now at 9.30 when the market opens, the market either shoots up into 10 o'clock because that is its directional bias coming from the trend. And then at 10 o'clock, you're gonna have a rotation. The rotation is gonna take you, it could be shallow or steep, can be from 10, 15, from, uh, from 10 o'clock to 10.15 or 10.30. And at 10.30, you have a trigger time. If you have a shallow retracement, about 25 to 50%, even a 75% retracement, the odds are for the pattern to continue higher 80% of the time. So here you're going to have your uh, other sweet spot that is going to carry the trade for a little bit longer duration. Most of the time we have trades from 9.32 to 9.35 that we carry uh, close to 10 o'clock. And then we wait for this sweet time frame into 10.30. Or you have a chop chop market like we had today. Uh, and most of the morning you had, uh, you had a sideways market. Sometimes the market is sideways the whole entire morning. Sometimes usually it's from 9.30 to 9.45 because you're getting some data at 9.45. And the market is not committing unless that uh, data is coming out at 9.45 or 10 o'clock at times. And then you get the breakout. And again, here on the pullback, you apply the same strategy that I explained into the reversal time. So the stock market is open from 9.30 to 4 o'clock. The futures market is open 24 hours a day. So many geopolitical events happen when the U.S. market is not open. So like I said, many markets that affect the U.S. market trade outside of the U.S. market hours. So would you rather, you know, wait until the market opens and you're going to find yourself with a gap up or a gap down, not knowing what to do, or would you rather act in the overnight? Um, is it easy to succeed in trading? Well, I'm going to keep it very simple because I don't, I only have about five minutes left, but I could tell you one thing. If you lose money in trading, you can make money in trading. It's all about being consistent and don't stop. Don't stop. Look at charts. Always try to better yourself. And remember that trading is not only finding out a strategy or finding out where I put my stop or I need to figure out how to um, how to figure out targets or this and that. Trading is, is a system. And the more you understand that trading is complex, it's not super hard because trading is actually super, super simple. But traders have the tendency to overcomplicate trading invent all sorts of indicators, invent all sorts of strategies that are literally crazy and out of this world, okay? Uh, so you need to have strategies, good strategies, management, mindset, experience, and attention to detail to develop the system. Have a system if you don't have, uh, if you don't have one or the other elements, go back to the books, read some books, etc. take a course. I'm not a true believer in uh, in books. You could read 5,000 books from Amazon. They're not going to teach you one thing. So before you dive in and trade with the sharks, just remember that the sharks are there to get you. 
they know exactly where our entries are, our targets are. Uh, remember that um, bro brokers sell, or sell our data because I'm also a retail trader, uh, sell our data to companies like Citadel, okay? Um, so um, the thing is that you need to trade in sync with them and not do stupid things to, to trade against them, right? Because that's when you draw attention. Uh, so the institutions are the big shards. Traders need to learn to swim along with them. Uh, sometimes you're getting um, a system, uh, for example, the market is 90% of the time is into a system trading and 10% uh, of the time is into, a, um, into price action trading. This kind of activity that we're having right now in the market yesterday and today is price action trading. So uh, experienced traders have no fear because they know how to surf with the waves and stay with the wave and ride it until it's really safe to exit. So who are these sharks? Definitely hedge funds, institutional traders, portfolio managers, big prop trading companies, market makers, hedgers, algos. Yeah, you either trade with them or you trade against them. I don't recommend you trade against them. Okay, trade, try to trade in sync with them. The next time you jump in a trade, just saying 10% of the traders make money from the rest of the 90% of the traders that jump in, okay? So stop chasing. If trading was as easy as, oh, I'm gonna buy this indicator or I'm gonna buy these phenomenal trading books. And I'm not saying books are awesome, but books are never going to help you put the things together, put the puzzle together, never. You have to have someone that is gonna put things together for you. How do I apply a setup within a trend? And how do I trail that specific trait, for example? And how do I position size? So you're gonna learn position sizing from a book. From another book, you're gonna learn traits. From another book, you're gonna learn candlesticks. From another book, you're, but you're never, and, and you could read 5,000 books. If you don't have someone that is gonna put everything together for you, you're gonna spin your wheels forever, okay? Um, can anyone make money? I told you, yes. If you have the proper preparation, if you have a good mentor, you can make money into this market in any kind of market. Because in trading, trading can only have four outcomes. You can either have big wins, small wins, break even trades, and small losses. Now, we trade live every single day, highly successful system. Again, system. We don't trade a setup. We don't wing it. That follows institutional money flow in the first two hours and enables us to profit from momentum moves, specific times, locations, precise technical patterns. Who else does this? algos we're that disciplined so i know how algos act and react and i apply this to my trading every single day and i've been doing this for many many years over 20 years our method overrides any kind of news uh, event artificial indicator earnings or dark pools uh trade an institutional grade trading system if you're ready to commit and say hey you know what i want to learn how to do this i want to learn two hours a day or I want to trade the system the whole day, or I want to trade, for example, at night. Um, we're going to teach you institutional levels, stress-free levels, precise buy and sell zones, management and risk management, highest patterns and technical um, and technical setups, uh, how and where to place stops so you don't get dinged out of trades, um, and uh, obviously trading psychology and putting the puzzle together, which this is the most important thing. How to put the puzzle together so if you want to make six to figure six to seven figure income in 2022 you need to make decisions uh you need to follow six to seven prove a figure proven successful trader that has been doing this over and over and over again proven proven um be wired for success mentally follow that person long enough to steal all the secrets and develop your own okay <clears throat> so is this program for you if you're losing money in the market, yes. Uh, if you don't have a system, it's time to get one. If you don't have a process that eliminates emotion, yes. Lack of confidence, this is the program for you. This program is literally gonna change your life because we teach everything from A to Z. You could actually call me or you can email me and I'm gonna send you the full description of the course uh, with everything that you're gonna learn from uh, candlesticks to money management to technical analysis to psychology to putting things together uh, powerful uh, but very simple indicators that we use uh, and other uh, things uh, so again uh, this is a trading system for the retail trader and we're going to teach you everything there is about trading from A to Z you won't need another book 
or mentor ever in your life. Plus, uh, I'm going to be there for you 100% of the time. It's not that you're getting a book from Amazon. You're reading it. You're putting it. And you go like, man, I do have some questions. Where I'm gonna, who am I going to call? Am I going to call the author? No, they're not going to call. Or you go to a big box company and say, or you get, you get a course that is recorded. And then if you want to talk to someone, it's like, who do I talk to now? Because I didn't get that. Okay, so I want that repeated. So what do I do now? Uh, you, you're not going to get that. With us, you, you have my undivided attention every single day. So you have the course and then you're going to be trading with me. You have access to me 24-7. I'm literally available for my traders 24-7. Uh, so we have the course coming up. Uh, we didn't have a course in January because I had COVID. Uh, but in February, we have the course that is set for uh, February 21st through the 25th. It's going to be a five-day course from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Uh, and we have an early bird special. We have three months trading room access, which is going to be waived, definitely $1,000 off. So you're not going to be paying for the trading room for three months. Uh, we have also 12 personal coaching sessions. This is going to be $6,900 in value. So we're going to meet one day per month to discuss whatever it is that you need to improve in your trading. So don't forget we're voted best in the industry. The cost of the course is $5,999. What does this represent for you for 2022? It's $16 a day. This is what we made last year. Okay, this is what we made last year. 161,000 based on one contract of trading. That $16 a day brought you here. Okay, uh, so uh, we also have a trading room. Uh, and if you say, hey, you know what? I don't want to do the course. I just want to see if this is for me. Uh, you could join our trading room. It's $299 a month. It's open every day from nine o'clock till uh, 12 o'clock. And this is where I execute my trade. So if you guys are interested, like I said, the course starts February 21st. Uh, it's going to be for five days and you're getting like super extra, extra bonuses just because I threw this out there uh, because we didn't have a course in January. And I really want to make sure that everybody has a really successful 2021. All right. If you guys want to get a hold of us. Uh, and by the way, if you're interested in the course, it's tradeoutloud.com for slash futures. And our email is info at tradeoutloud.com. So thank you so much. Um, I don't know if you still have a time. Um, actually okay, to the point where they're going to need to email you their questions and, okay. um, and I put the links in the chat so everybody could, should be able to click right on it for tradeoutloud.com forward slash futures. And I put your email address in there. All right. Thanks so much, Sherry. So if you guys have any questions, I'm here. If you, um, uh, Want to talk over the phone? Shoot me an email. I'll send you my phone number, and uh, we can uh, we can chat about trading. Thanks so much, Sherry. Oh, Anka, I want you to answer one question. I think we got time for this. Is your system okay. just as effective in the afternoon as in the mornings? Yes, a hundred percent. And not only okay. that, it's effective in the afternoon, but it's uh, 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 I teach the strategies for the afternoon. Uh, because like I said, there's uh, some adjustments that you need to make to the system, to the time frames. Uh, and then you could, with the same system, uh, I teach how to trade the overnight market. So the overnight market, uh, when, especially when it's setting up, it's set it and forget it. So you decide, you establish your entry, your stop, your target, and then you wake up the next morning. And that's pretty much it. You're either up or down. Okay. Fantastic. Thanks for the question, Mike. Anka, thank you for being with us. I really, really think that everybody out there should take a look at this closely and take advantage of it. It's a great, great, great opportunity. So thank you so much, Sherry, for having me. And thank you, everyone, uh, for um for being here. Thanks. Have a good day. You too. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Bye. All right. Okay, that was Anka Metcalf with Trade Out Loud LLC. And our next speaker, oh, I just want to let you guys know that um, 
if you have to step out or if you've had to step away, uh, we do post the recordings at tradersexclusive.com forward slash archived underscore webinars. And um, we also have a YouTube channel. Uh, this basically right here, you'll go to the tradersexclusive.com. You'll see on the right hand side, it says visit our trading education webinars where I have the green arrow. You just click that. It'll take you to the next page, which tells you all of our upcoming webinars, which the next webinar is for February 16th. Well, I think uh, that's that slide is old. That's for last year. But our next one is February 16th. But you click on the here where the green arrow is pointing and it takes you to all of the webinars we've done since June of 2020. Now. Our next expert trader coming in is Sunny Harris of Sunny Harris Enterprises. She's going to talk to us about the pragmatic trader's approach to trading stocks and e-mini. And um, I was especially intrigued on practical approaches to increasing your hourly wage. So I just want to let you know that um, Sunny is a full-time trader, mentor, mathematician, programmer, consultant. She's an author of five best-selling trading books, and she's in the process of writing easy language, object-oriented programming made easy. Whew, I don't know. I don't know, Sunny. <laughs> That's, that, that doesn't sound easy. It sounds very complicated. You are self-muted, and I want to make you the presenter. Good morning. Hi. Now, I can't remember, and I should. Do you like to take questions on the fly? Do you ask questions that you like to get interaction with, or do you like the questions to be held until you are done with your presentation? Uh, I think we should hold them until we're done. I've got a lot of slides this morning, and I'm going to have to go kind of fast to get through them in 45 minutes. All right. All right. Well, so we, are, we are a little off the mark, so you've got 45 minutes from the time which, you start. Uh, Sherry, which screen are you seeing? Right now, I'm seeing show taskbar display settings, so it's kind of like your yeah, slideshow, not but not monitor. in slideshow. No. How do I get? You, well, how do I get you on the other monitor? Let's see. Display settings. Well, gonna, how about that? Want, there you go. Now I need to take all these things off and put them over on the other monitor. I have five monitors here on a, and I, I trade with a. Believe That's it or not. That's not I'm confusing at all, ever, is it? <laughs> oh no, I can't even find the mouse though. <laughs> yeah, that's the hard that's part, finding the mouse. That's a little problem. So uh, I trade with an Alienware laptop, so I can trade anytime, anywhere, and uh, I do. And it's it's a little heavy to travel with, but I do it. I don't take the five monitor, just the one. <laughs> I leave the other. <laughs> one. All right. So here take we go. it away. Thanks for joining Thanks. us. Uh huh. Thank you. Okay, my passion is in helping beginners learn to trade and of course intermediate traders as well. This talk is for traders who have not yet become wildly successful and people who have not traded much and want to learn and folks who want to improve their trading results. So I'm for beginners and intermediates of all sorts. And of course we have the disclaimer, which is past performance is not a predictor of future results and you can and will lose money trading, it happens. And if you're trading futures like I do, you can lose more than you have in your account. So be sure that you only trade with risk capital. <clears throat> I said that already. Uh, many people have started with their trading and investing portfolios with choice stocks. And I not all know how to pick stocks. So I'm gonna use some of my proprietary indicators for this talk. I will teach you how to use my Sunny Bands indicator and how I trade stocks, futures, and crypto for my own account. I am a full-time trader. I've been trading for 41 years. I trade futures and stocks, and I do not trade options. I only know how to lose money with options, so I quit doing that a long time ago. I'm going to kind of uh, race through the, the slides about my, my uh, credentials but you need to know a little bit about who you're talking to here. So I'm gonna show you how I trade first. I trade the S&P 500 futures contract, the one minute and the five minute charts. 
Uh, a lot of people say this is the most difficult market to trade, but it's also the most liquid. And I've been doing it, as I said, for 41 years. Uh, I also have long-term stock holdings, which to me means a week or more, sometimes even years. And I do dabble in a little bit of cryptocurrencies. I have some Ethereum. And uh, this is my, let me show you the, this indicator down here is called my dynamic moving average histogram. This is a real clear indicator of when to get out and when to get in. I have my sunny bands, which are the green and teal lines around price. And you can see real quickly how, how price goes from the bottom band to the top band. And when the gold is on top, it goes back to the midline and it goes to the top, goes back to the midline. As it drops through the midline, goes right back down to the sunny band. So this is a great way to, to just follow the market along. And on the bottom, I have an indicator I call who's on top. And what it does is showed me just at a glance, uh, whether the purple line's on top or the gold line's on top. So with the gold line on top, I like to be long. With the purple on top, I like to be short. It's as simple as that. I like colors that I can identify with real quickly because I don't like to have to be making decisions while I'm trying to trade. So this is the kind of insights you can get from me for free if you sign up for my free Sunday night sunny side of the street technical newsletter. If you can't find it, just email me. I'm at sunny at moneymentor.com. I will post these slides on my website, moneymentor.com. And uh, you can have the PDFs there. And of course, uh, Sherry will have the recording for you. So you can click on these things when you see the PDFs. OK, just real quickly, I've been rated number one trader twice with the 365.4% uh, and 178% profit. And that was using my sunny bands and my dynamic moving average. And there you can see the sheet of paper that is highlighted on. I have degrees in mathematics and photography. I've been programming for 52 years, I trading for 41. I started out as a systems programmer for Lockheed. I founded a little software company when I was 24 and I retired at 30. Sold my stock in the company and retired. Uh, I gave my millions then to money managers, which was a very bad idea. And I figured I can lose as much money as they can myself. So I taught myself to read through reading 117 books, and now I've read 734 books. I bring into play all that I know when I'm trading. And I did not enter a single trade for the first year of watching the market. And I published a magazine for eight years called Traders Catalog and Resource Guide, which I stopped when the internet came in and it was clear that magazines were gonna be on the internet. So I've appeared in Stocks and Commodities Magazine many times. I have five best-selling books and here they are. And I'm now working on the one that she said with the long title with my friend, Sam Tennis, who's the author of Ask Mr. Easy Language and was the originator of the Easy Language software. I've written articles for all the, all the notable trade magazines that we know of and more. Here are the books that I've written. And, and also using Easy Language 9.x with Murray Ruggiero, who has since left us. He uh, died of cancer last year, which is really sad. And here's the one I'm working on right now. And this one is a technical uh, computer manual, really, for using TradeStation's Easy Language object oriented program. So let's see, I've been top 10 consultants many times in Stocks and Money's magazine and also top 10 courses and seminars. I do teach people to trade. I love to teach people to trade. Um, prices are reasonable considering the education. And I also mentor people. Uh, top trader, I've told you that. And I belong to all the notable uh, trading, society, trading and investing societies. So as a consultant, I have been rated in the top 10, number three it was. And uh, then I have a quips and quotes page on my Money Mentor site, which you can see right here, quips 
and you can read what everybody says about me. There are hundreds of comments in there. I also have a Facebook page. You can see Sunny Vans in the background, and that's where I post about once a week. I'll post uh, where I think the market's going. I'm not always right. Nobody is. So you can go to Facebook or you can uh, get Sunny Side of the Street and see what it is I say for free. And I completely revised Money Mentor this year. So you might want to take a look at it if you've already looked at it. So how to make a six figure income. Let's say that we want to make $120,000 a year. The next thing you do, next thing I do for sure is to break that into parts. So 120 a year divided by 12 months is 10,000 a month. And you say, well, how am I ever going to make 10,000 a month? Let's break that down. There's 20 trading days. That's about $500 a day. That sounds a little easier, doesn't it? That means you just make five trades and make $100 each. Now you've got $120,000 a year. Five trades, $100 each. So you probably all know how to buy stocks and hold stocks. But what about futures? We're going to talk a little bit about futures for those of you who haven't traded them yet. I'm going to tell you just briefly about trading futures. Futures, also known as derivatives, because their value is derived from the underlying instrument. So the E-mini is a futures contract based on the S&P 500, which is a, an index of 500 big stocks. So they're not like stocks in some ways, but they are like stocks in other ways. If you own a stock, you own a small piece of a real company and you can hold it forever. And stocks don't usually drop to zero, although some do. If you trade futures, however, you're buying a contract to take delivery of a commodity at a later date, and you could lose more than your initial investment. You can buy stocks, and if you want to set up a margin account and the stock is borrowable, then you can short them. I don't short stocks. I buy and get out, and then buy again and get out. But with futures, I go long and short and long and short over and over again throughout the day. So what is shorting then? You might ask that. Well, long is buying in hopes that the stock's going to, or futures contract's going to go up. And shorting is selling something you don't own on the promise you'll buy back later on the hope that it's going to go down. So you need to ask yourself the question, are you a trader or an investor? An investor buys and holds for the long term and a trader gets in and out going long and short, long and short, hoping, hoping to get short-term profits. And I am both in two different portfolios. I don't trade them in the same portfolio. Here's what an investor's chart looks like. You buy back here when it was seven cents and you know it's gonna go up and you hang onto it for years and years. And per share, you would have made $162.25 on that seven cent investment. So that's a whole lot of percentage. Here's, however, a chart of going short and long, and that's different. You see the yellow dots here? Each yellow dot marks the perfect high and perfect lows. That's an indicator that I use. That I, All of my indicators are for sale, by the way. Um, anything that I use, and, and I've created them all only for my own use, and then I have found that other people want them, so then I made them available. So this is yellow dots, long, short, long, short. In the same amount of time that the investor made $162 per share, the trader could have made $263 per share. It's different. If you had a started with 100 shares, then the investor made $16,200, but the trader made $26,300, of course, theoretically. So if you started with Apple at the value of $0.07 cents in 1981, and the current price of $162, I haven't looked at it today, this is a few days ago. Then the investor made 23, no, 2300% approximately, and the trader would make 3700%. So that's why I'm both a trader and an investor. Now you ask, is this really possible? The answer is yes and no. You can't catch all the moves, that's the important part. So according to my research, you can only capture about 60% of each move when you're trading. But the investor must sit through long periods of scary negative 
markets while the trader can go short and make money from that side as well. Let's look for a second at the Dow Jones. Are we all familiar with the Dow Jones? And it's reported daily on the news and we all relate to the numbers on the Dow. So if they report on the news that the Dow is down 300 points, we all know what that means. In the last few weeks, it was down 28.79 points from its high. And that was 7.75% it went down. I think uh, at the lowest it almost touched or did touch the 10% down mark, which is a sign of a correction. But we've been bouncing back. So here's a, here's a, oh, that's not weekly. Here's a, sorry about the slide title. Here's a daily chart of the Dow. You can see that it w went down. It did touch the, uh, the, the wick of this candle did touch the 10% down, which is this blue line that I drew. So I just wanted to see if it would hit that, I, I drew that well in advance. I drew it over here at the high. And you can see that it dipped down, just touched that and bounced right back off. That's a that's what I call an attractor. It's actually support and resistance in a way, but I call it support and resistance and moving averages and Fibonacci lines. I call them all attractors because the market is attracted to previous prices. Okay, that's the weekly chart. You can see in light blue here, I've drawn Fibonacci lines on this, and you can see over, and I drew it from the COVID crash back in 2020, and you can see that the market has been going up, 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 and it just goes right to that Fibonacci line and then pops up again, and it does it over and over. So let's take a look at the Dow Jones, and we'll say, why do I say so far, as far as the drop goes? In order to, to look where things are going to drop, I look at vantage points, artificial intelligence software. I've had it for years and years, and I mark the predictions that they give on my chart, so I know, and it, it perfectly hit that prediction this morning. It is predictive software, and it gives me a perspective of where things are likely to end up or down tomorrow. And I do post it for free daily on the Money Mentor, and I consult it every night before the next trading day. So Wednesday's prediction, that's today, is here. And you see they predicted it would go slightly beneath the previous candle and then on up. And let's see what I don't, yep, it went down and now it's going up. This is the website. If you want to uh, go take a little free course, it's a video thing uh, that teaches you how to use vantage points, you can log into that site stands for Vantage Point Artificial Intelligence. U.S. is for U.S. and then my name. Okay, now let's look at the standard moving averages that are quoted in Barron's and Investors Business Daily and Wall Street Journal. They report the 20-day, 50-day, and 200 moving averages. And then I'm gonna get to my outlook on the market. So I have these three standard moving averages on a chart here of the Dow, weekly Dow, and you can see the, the fast one, which is the 20 day is blue. And when the market hits it, it dips, bounces back off, hits it and right here. You can see it drop down to the 50, which is the orange line. So 50 day moving average is important. And here it dropped below it. And then when it gets down to the 200 day moving average, we're in trouble. On a daily chart, this is what it looks like. And there you, again, you can see the 10% drop marked in advance. And on the daily chart, it did drop down below the 200. And I don't know where we are today on the Dow, but we have to get back up above that 200. And we are. I just took a look at it on my computer. We are now above the 200. So now that you know that trading and especially futures trading is risky. I'm gonna show you how I trade. And I've been doing it, seems like, for my whole life. Uh, and, and I'll also sell you my system and my indicators and I'll teach you exactly how I trade it. You've got access to me anytime you want it if you've got questions. And it's the same system that made me number one trader twice. And that was with actual money. It was not a contest. Here's how I personally trade. I put one, the first, put uh, attractors on my charts. And I told you a second ago what those were. 
So I coined the term to describe all kinds of support and resistance and moving averages and Fibonacci. And then I put on my Sunny Bands indicator, which is based on uh, a complex mathematical scheme that I developed to simplify moving averages. It's called my dynamic moving average. It's the gold and purple lines in the center of the Sunny Bands. What I did was remove the whipsaw from the market. Whipsaw is what kills us all. Uh, and, and markets are sideways about 60% of the time and only trend about 40% of the time. So you've got to watch out for whipsaw. So here is the first attractor. You see, I drew it at the high. This is a five minute chart. I drew it at the high here. And then I draw another one at this sideways period where we've got a low that's in this congestion phase. And then it pops up and then it drops down to the slope. So I draw those on there and along with the open high and low for the day. And I watch these attractors to see when the market uh, is going to bounce off of them or break through them. And here's the sunny bands. And I'm going to tell you how I trade the sunny bands. And that is by hitting the bottom, going back up to the top, following the band down, 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 hitting the midline. And now we're long. It's really very simple. And here's how I choose stocks. I don't short stocks. I buy and hold them, and then I wait for a sell signal to take profits. And here's what the next chart tells me. I, what I want to know is which stocks are above the 20, 50, and 200 day moving averages, and whether my DMA is bullish or bearish. So I, in TradeStation, I created a little radar screen view to look at all this information. And it also tells me what the potential profit is from each move. So this is radar screen, and I know that's complex, but if you have TradeStation and you would like to have a trial of any of these indicators, I do give a seven day free trial away. And here you can see, I'm looking for any stocks right there. There's two stocks that are all green. And I, uh, McDonald's and, I uh, can't read the other one, 3M. So those two stocks are green. That means to me that that's an investing opportunity. Here we have another stock that's all green for all three averages, 20, 50, and 200. Those are stocks that are powerful despite the recent slip that we had. Uh, in these colorful cells here, you can see what my dynamic moving average is telling me. Uh, if you want to subscribe to my free sunny bands, I mean, uh, sunny side of the street, uh, then I explain all of those things in there and I use them and illustrate them with charts and explanations every Sunday night. I spend all day Saturday and Sunday preparing this newsletter. The yellow is my PHW indicator and radar screen view and you can double click on a column and sort them to see which has the highest PHW which is nearly all, always Amazon and uh, then this column buy and hold tells me how much money I would have made for buy and hold. The yellow column tells me how much I would have made trading. So there's the three moving averages. Here's the DMA information. And that column is the PHW or potential hourly wage calculation. So first I look for the stocks that are above all three moving average, 20, 50, and 200 day. And then I screen for the high performers showing all green cells. And these were the ones that last week uh, I made this list. And those were the ones that were showing all green. And I'm going to take a look at these charts. Here's Apple, our daily chart with sunny bands and the who's on top indicator telling me at a glance whether the green, the purple line or the gold line is on top. And here's my DMAH. And you can see right here when it turned red, that was the time to short that stock. And then it continued on down. Here it is on a weekly chart, and you can see the same information. And here's the vantage point prediction. And so I knew in advance following this that that was going to go short because vantage point predicts the market the day before. CVX, daily, same information. Gold on top, that's a good one. Although this red right here on the histogram 
shows me that that stock is looking at some weakness. On a weekly chart, here it is. You can see that it went up again. These are all the ones that are all green. Here it hits resistance or an attractor at the 0% Fibonacci line and also this orange line that I have coming back from, from the high over here. Vantage point prediction says it was going to go up with a low at this point and a high at that point. And it did. Coca-Cola, it was another one of the all green ones. You can see it was still was going up at that point. And uh, if it had any retracement, I would have expected it to come back to the 23.6 or 38%, 38.2% for Fibonacci. Coca-Cola on a weekly chart, same deal. I'm expecting Coca-Cola to go right on up. I'm a coffee drinker. Is anybody else a coffee drinker? Uh, I've, they have for a new uh, sugar-free coffee cola drink. I'm going to have to try that. Here's the vantage point prediction, however, for Coca-Cola. Hmm, looks like it's got some correcting to do. McDonald's, same story, has was above the 200, um, above the 50 and above the 20 at that point. So it was all green. Nevertheless, predicted to take a little downfall. On a weekly chart, same story. And here are the projections. Uh, I drew it from back here. So the projections are, when it says minus, I read that as plus and, and vice versa. So I'm looking for a uh, market move up to the 23.6 line on McDonald's. Vantage Point predicts. Uh, from that candle predicts a little bit of down into the previous candle and then on up. Here's Merck, which has an, and I've got head and shoulders marked over here. You can see that with the shoulders and the head and the other shoulder. Um, because of the head and shoulders, this extension right here would be the prediction for the correction of the head and shoulders. It, but head and shoulders patterns fail frequently. Merck on a weekly chart, you can see more head and shoulders patterns, and you can see uh, a lot of congestion going on here. See the attractors, through the, I always draw them in orange because I identify with orange being my attractors. And uh, every morning I also draw, or every night, the night before, I also draw all the, or both of the vantage point predict, projection lines on there. So I know, and it went perfectly to the predicted value this morning. And there's that one for Merck. Procter & Gamble, same story, all green, above all three averages, and we have some growth to go up to this next blue line, which is the Fibonacci chart. Now. Procter & Gamble on a weekly chart, same story, Sunny Bands tells me where, which way to trade, whether I should be long or short, and the projections take us up to 168 on that chart. Vantage Point says they were going down the next day. This was on the 25th of January, I made this chart. So all those things have already come true. So let's do the same thing for the E-mini. E-mini is the, uh, ES is the E-mini contract of the S&P 500. And the margin at this time is 11,880. No one trades the big boy anymore. That's what I grew up trading was the big boy. Uh, which started uh, in September of 97. And when it was active, I was trading 20 contracts of the big boy at a time. And the margin was 50 grand per contract. So you can see that's a hefty sum. But it's not as recognizable as the Dow. So I often, but nevertheless, it's the most liquid commodity. If you look in the back of, back of Stocks and Commodities magazine, they always have a futures liquidity table there. And you can see it's, important to me to trade only the most liquid markets because I get better fills. Uh, you don't have as much slippage. If you're trading a lumber contract, there's nobody in the pit. And so you never know what kind of fills you might get. Here's the E-mini on a daily chart. You can see it drop down even below the 200 average. This is not an up-to-date chart, I'm afraid, but you can see that it dropped right to there, even dropped down and touched this attractor, which came off of this 
low right back here, drop down, touch that, and bounce. And of course, now up today it's up in this area. So on a weekly chart, uh, the 200 day is 200 weeks, and it dropped right down to that 50 moving average. And here's the 10% drop right there and it hit that 10% drop perfectly. On the NASDAQ, which a lot of people like to watch, uh, and it's a futures contract too, you can see we entered a period of choppy sideways action and then we fell below all three averages. Bang. Let's see, the NASDAQ today is up 62.75 points right now. The vantage point for the NASDAQ that day was some up, some down. The way I read this thing is at some point in the day, the market will, will have gone from here up to there and back down to here or vice versa, from here down to here and back up to there. So with the, I make vantage points lines, dotted green lines on my chart. And I watch those because when it hits one extreme, I know it's going to go to the other extreme. And that's all there is to it. Did I get through that too fast? No, I think I have 10 minutes. So I look at the attractors. I look at Vantage Point. There again is the website. That's a free seminar. I study my dynamic moving average and the sunny bands. And then I trade the E-mini on one minute and five minute charts. So they're really fast. I even have one chart that I watch that's 233 ticks. It goes really fast. And I do trade many times a day, five to 10 times every day. With equities though, I buy and hold and I do it for weeks to months to even years. So I hold them for uh, the same signal from the sunny bands that I look for on a five minute chart. I look for it to hit the top and drop back down. I watch the gold and purple lines on the DMA so I can see what whether I should be long or short. And uh, when it says to go short, then I get out of the stock and wait for it to retrace, and then I buy more. I do have a YouTube channel. You can see I post videos, how-tos. They're all how-tos on different things. Uh, and of course, that's all free. If you want to go to YouTube and pick up some of my videos, that would be a good thing. Oh, and let me go back a slide. You can see my phone numbers right there. That's my cell phone. You can call me. I like to chat, especially to new traders and people who want to improve their results. That's free too. So give me a call sometime. And the last piece of this puzzle is that every night before I go, before I go put away my trading tools and go to bed, I consult the Vantage Point software to get a clue where the markets might go tomorrow. And the gray bar on the right is tomorrow's forecast. I don't work for Vantage Point, no. I just have had the software for many, many years and I know that it's highly accurate. There's my website, go see quips and quotes, um, books and articles, I have a bookstore in there and here's a list of all of my products and services. You can see I do mentoring and consulting and programming uh, and I do sell my indicators. Now, I did say that they're all developed for use in my own trading. So I don't have a bunch of indicators. I do have a lot of indicators and I use several of them every single day on my five minute chart and I use others of them on a long term chart. I program them all to make my trading easier and I make them available to you. And I will show you exactly how I use them. I don't hold anything back. And there's where you go if you're interested in ordering anything. Yeah. Don't hold anything back. I'll tell you all the secrets. So there's what the order form looks like. You just decide what you want, add to cart, and check out. Further down on that list, you can see it's you have to scroll down to see everything. You can click on view on chart or view chart, sorry. Uh, on any of the items, you can view the chart and see what it does. However, today. If you order before the end of this week, and today's Wednesday, so that means two days, I'll give anybody that calls 20% 20, 20 off indicators and strategies, and even on my consulting and mentoring, 20% off today. But my prices are all going up on March 1st. So 
now's the time if you're interested. Um, or if you order before the 16th, which gets you two weeks to think about it, then the discount's only 10% off. And yes, that even includes mentoring and consulting time. If you have TradeStation and want, or, or Metastock and uh, want a seven day trial, give me a call or email me at sunny at moneymentor.com or give me a call on my cell phone. Uh, I work, well, I get up at 5 a.m. every morning and I work till nine o'clock at night every day of the week. So 24 seven, almost, not quite 24, but 16, 27, that's what I answer my phone. So I will need your customer number and your email and your phone number to, to give you that seven day trial. Now, questions, do we have any questions? And I can't see the chat, so I don't know where the questions are. All right, just a second. I'm going to get that up so you can. Uh, let's see. Do we have any? Is a real question. Ah, uh, yes, we do. It looks like. Oh, wait a minute. No, nope. everybody. If uh, we have a couple more minutes, if you have questions for Sunny, we'd like for you to type them in now, please. Um, I'm going to also. Did you have a link that you'd like me to post into the chat so they can just click on to get to it? www.moneymentor.com. Okay. And where do I see the chats if they do come up? Oh, chat. I see it. I'll tap in it. Oh, okay. You had special offer on there, right? Yes, I did. Okay, I'm going to put the right one in there. Um, that's, you know, special offer 20% off through the end of the week, 10% off through the next two weeks. Oh, nice. Okay. All right, I'm not uh, seeing any questions this. coming through right now. They'll need to, um, they'll need to email you. What email is best for you to, to have them come to you with questions? Sunny at moneymentor.com. And here's my information, so let's just put that up. And Sherry did all the work, so thank you, Dan and Sherry. We'll go back. <laughs> on. Oh, <laughs> yes. Okay, so someone said hopefully we'll get a replay. Yes, you will. You'll get a notification from Go to Webinar, and we'll also let you know about it on our website, TradersExclusive.com, and we also and, have a YouTube channel. And I will be posting these slides in PDF form on moneymentor.com. All you have to okay. do is join as, a, join as a free member and you'll get access to the members only page. All right, and plus everybody needs to know that you'll be getting email from each of our presenters. So you can decide um, to stay subscribed to their lists or uh, how you wanna proceed. But I mean, really free tips and techniques and strategies in your email, can you beat that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. I used to All charge right. a bundle for this kind of advice. Yeah. And uh, and also you get that aspect of that personal access. I just did a, a four week uh, strategy trading forum for free uh, an hour every Tuesday. Uh, so that was free. And I had about 50 people sign up for that. Ooh, and nice. Starting in April, I'm doing another four weeks uh, forum, and this one's on technical analysis. And again, it's free as well. All you have to do is register for it. Okay. All right, Jam do we have any questions for Sunny? Sorry, go ahead, Sunny, sorry about that. Oh, I was said it's, it's jam packed with information. So you don't have to read the books, you can just attend the free forum. Perfect. All right. Looks like no questions. Is anybody You said there? it all. Apparently, you left out it. You left any doubts behind for everyone. So uh, hopefully, everyone's <laughs> going to be able to increase their hourly wage right now. Well, fantastic. I appreciate. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us, and uh, I can't sharing. wait to do it again. You have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. All right. Oh, let me get this off here. 
second. What is that doing there? Hold on. There we go. Thank you very much, Sunny. Okay, guys, we're gonna introduce our next speaker. He's waiting in the wings. He's got a lot to share with us. It's Larry Gaines of Power Cycle Trading. And he's gonna talk about best high reward, low risk option strategies for conquering uncertain markets. And his strategy includes butterflies and long condors. So um, Larry, he's been involved in trading and brokering commodities and financial markets for over 30 years. He started his career trading tanker cargoes of foreign crude oil for a leading NYSE oil company in the early 80s and quickly advanced his career to become an executive VP of one of the largest international oil trading companies in the world. He started trading options in 1987 on cargoes of crude oil and in 2010 started a trading educational company to teach option trading based on his directional trading model and option strategies designed to provide high returns on low defined risk. So happy to have you here, Larry. Let me just double check. Um, let's see. I, I can't hear you, but your mic is on. Yeah, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. How are you okay, today? Great. Well, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me here. Well, we appreciate you coming along here and, and sharing your okay. tips and tricks and strategies with everyone. Well, so you. Uh, I just made Let you the me. presenter. Do you ask questions and do you like people to ask you questions during your presentation? Uh, probably best at the end, but it, you know, because okay. I can't really keep track, I'm, I'm looking at my presentation and stuff. Okay. So, All right. Yeah, so yeah. I'd be happy to. Let All right, we got it. Got everything here. Um, you just let me know when you want me to put up links in your email. I'm listening okay. over here while I'm working on a couple other things. Okay. And well, um, everybody else, please take some notes and uh, be ready to ask questions at the end of the presentation. And with that, I'll mute myself and take it away, Larry. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I'm happy to be here today. And uh, it's a good time to be around when we're talking about, you know, kind of high uncertain type of high volatility markets. And that's exactly what we're in. So that's what I'll be uh, talking about today. Some of the best kind of high reward, low risk option strategies to use in these kind of uncertain times. So two of them that I really like to go to when we're really uncertain about market uh, volatility or direction is the butterfly and long condor. So I'll show you why that's the, the case today. So the following presentation is purely for educational purposes. Any stocks, futures, or options mentioned does not constitute advice and should not be construed as a recommendation. Now, to me, the secret to trading profits for 2022 is gonna be really looking to rely on the butterfly and the long condors. These are my two kind of favorite go-to strategies when we're really uncertain about the market and you know, a lot of headline risk and a lot of potential for the markets to uh, have really uh, excessive moves. And the reason is because these two strategies are very low risk and very defined risk, as you're going to see. So I think you know, we're going to have all this uncertainty throughout 2022, you know, inflationary uh, time frame. The Fed is backed out of the market as far as the, you know, backstopping the market. So there's going to be a lot of a lot of volatility here. So these are two strategies that you definitely want to you know, look to to add to your portfolio of trading. Now, I've been trading options for over 30 years and have found that the most valuable go to option strategies they can help literally any trader or investor more than any other strategy known and especially during these extreme market uncertainty kind of conditions are the option butterfly and the long condor so i kind of phrase and term these as my trading secret weapon because of their you know great risk reward uh you know, structure now the huge advantage that these strategies uh, have is their unique option framework that's designed to take advantage of time decay or theta and volatility, which are the two main option pricing components. All right, so this will help to really stack the trading odds way in your favor and can be used in any type of market environment, which makes them a really favorite tra trading strategy for these uncertain times that, uh, in the market. So it just comes down to if you just know when and how to use them. 
Now, because they are structured to require only a small amount of your hard-earned capital, your trade returns are going to be very explosive. And so I kind of call this lightning in a bottle. I had a, <clears throat> one of my first uh, bosses when I was first started trading oil. He would get really excited when you make a really great trade and say, this is like lightning in a bottle. You know, and he wanted to kind of bottle it up if he could. So th these, a lot of times you'll see these kind of exciting uh, results from the butterfly and condor. Now, the butterfly and the long condors, they're very dynamic and they can be traded for a variety of different reasons with different goals in mind. So in other words, once you learn how to trade the butterfly and the long condor, you're going to be covered for both your offense and your defense. So goals and protection and profits and hedging. All right. So that makes them a really great combination. Now, these kind of strategies, they can work uh, no matter what the direction is of the market. You could be an up, down or sideways market environment. They can provide income from the stocks, uh, stocks that are or ETFs that are going nowhere, eliminates the stress of having to be perfect on a stock's direction or overall market, eliminates the time decay expenses that in, are encountered from decaying long options, and takes the unsettling guesswork out of your trading. So these can also be structured for very low cost or low capital at risk and offer you returns of 10 to 1 or higher on your uh, you know, reward to risk type parameter. So just an excellent all around kind of structure for really any market environment, especially when you get into high volatility markets. Now, when we look at the butterfly and long condor, they're you know, really great for hedging when you, when you mess things up and that's gonna happen. So you can you know, use this as a, what I call a fast, low cost way to cover your, you know what, pronto when a position starts to move against you. And I've literally found no other hedging strategy that comes close to this. Uh, for, for this kind of structure that you can, you know, neutralize risk, but not only neutralize, but lower your risk immediately. Now, by constructing either a butterfly or long condor around a strike that is under pressure from another core trade, let's say you had a credit spread on or a debit spread, it is really a great way to immediately neutralize and also lower that risk. So I don't know if many of you have done credit spreads, but you'll know that you know you could have you know, do ten credit spreads and are all looking pretty good, eight or eight or nine, and then that one destroys you. So by you know adding this kind of butterfly structure as protection can really be a lifesaver. And the same for debit spreads. So we'll look at that. And this was a comment from one of my members that uh, got in some trouble with credit credit spreads. She said, "Wish I'd known how to do this hedging <clears throat> before I lost so much money uh, doing credit spreads." Now, when we look at the structure there, it's very kind of simplistic, but uh, it's a great structure. So here's like a typical, this would be like a call debit spread here. So long a call, short a call. And so your risk here on the debit spread is your debit's cost of $300 right here. So that's the maximum risk. And your spread width here in this example is 1,010 to 1,020. So it's a $1,000 wide spread. And your risk is 300, so that gives you your potential profit of 700. Okay, so really good risk reward. But what I try to always teach my members and clients is let's let's not lose our full capital at risk. Uh, and and one way to do this is we can hedge this out using it or just structuring or adjusting it to a butterfly. All we have to do is add a credit spread to the structure, and this is kind of the, the basis of the butterfly. So we could come out here and we could sell the uh, bear call credit spread here. So we'd be selling a call right here, short a call, and then long a call down here, spread with, again, the same $1,000 wide right here. Okay. And so the, here, your $1,000 wide spread, your maximum credit received is 200 so the potential, uh, you know, uh, potential uh, risk here is 800. So it's a negative risk ratio. But when you add these two to, together, we just created a butterfly, which is a great way to adjust a trade if you need to, or just to do the trade in general. So here we've got a butterfly structure out of that. So we've got the call debit spread here. Then we added a credit spread here. And now we've got the butterfly and our max risk now is reduced down to $100. So you can see that if you go out anywhere inside, there's what we call the profit zone or the tent, you've got a great potential uh, reward to risk ratio. And if you were to hit it exactly at your body of butterfly here, you'd make $900 on your risk of 100. So, you know, that's a 900% return.
So out of all the option strategies, our option spread strategies, this strategy here will give you the highest reward to risk of any that are out there. Now, the long condor is similar. I call it kind of because and it's in the same category. But the thing I love about this is that we can widen out the profit zone, okay? So we don't have to have it as tight. So we're threading a you know, tighter needle like a butterfly. So we can widen out this zone and have a wider profit zone. So great way, this is usually the go-to first step on a hedge. If we set up a debit spread or call dough spread or put debit spread, we can immediately hedge this out using usually uh, revert to or adjust it to a long condor. So we, we retain a big profit zone, but we reduce our risk. And also we reduce our theta decay, theta decay. So it makes it into what we call a positive uh, theta type trade, which is always something I'm looking to, to, you know, to enhance a trade to. So let's take a look at the core concepts that make the butterfly and long condor dynamic. So when we look at these two types of strategies, the most important option factor for profit generation using the butterfly and long condor comes down to really understanding how option pricing works and the concept of time decay or theta and its effect on the price of your option. So when we're pricing out an option, it's gonna come down to time and implied volatility, the two main com uh, components. So let's take a look at theta and what that has to do and the impact that it has. Now, theta tells us how much an option price will go down over time. So it's the rate of time decay of your stock's option. And time decay occurs because the extrinsic value or what's referred to as your time value goes down as expiration draws near and will be at zero at expiration. So it's a decaying type of part of the asset of the spread. Now, when we look at the butterfly and long condor, they both have a sell side component, which then takes advantage of selling options, which is selling option premium or selling time and selling volatility. So in this example, for, for instance, uh, here's, you know, XYZ is trading at $45. And we're looking for a directional move in this example, just down to 43. So not, not big, but uh, targeted down to 43. So for every trade that I set up, I always start out with a target, okay? So I do what I call price target analysis. And that's a com combination, usually Fibonacci, moving averages and uh, price action or uh, option activity, unusual option activity. So in this example, we see, see there's a good target to, that could go to 43. So we're gonna structure a butterfly where we're gonna have the body of the butterfly at 43 right here. So in this example, we could buy the 44 put, sell the 43 put, and then sell the 43 put again and buy the 44 to cap our risk. So this is a totally risk capture or risk uh, uh, trade that's, uh, that's a totally you know, defined risk, so it's not unlimited. And now we've just structured a, what I call a kind of a narrowing butterfly like this. So if you look at the cost of the trade, it'll be your cost of your put here, the 238 cost there, $2.38, cost of the 42 put here, $1.06, and then you're bringing in premium of the 43 put that you shorted two times at $1.67, so times 100 to make it into an option spread or contract because one option is equivalent to 100 shares. So now you can see your cost of this trade, maximum risk, $10 per spread, okay? Now your profit will be just take the middle strike or take your strikes you can see that 44 43 that's a dollar wide 43 42 it's a dollar wide strike spread all right so 43 minus 42 less the cost of the trade 10 cents equals 90 cents times 100 so your potential theoretical profit if it goes out right at your body at 43 at expiration would be 90 dollars per spread butterfly on your risk of 10 dollars so that's a 900% return. So you're risking a dollar to make nine. So, you know, it's just a, a fantastic strategy, especially again, in your, you know, when you're in uncertain types of markets. Now, the next thing you wanna do is, you know, choose the best butterfly or long condor strategy that uh, is gonna, you know, meet your trading goals. And uh, in my opinion, one major goal for every trader is really to select trades based on what's going to provide you the most consistent positive returns with low defined risk and not always the greatest returns. So when I look at a trade, I always look at the risk first, not the profit first. I look at the risk to see if it's okay. And then I do kind of analysis, what I call risk reward analysis. So 
based on what's the maximum potential profit you could make on that specific trade. I look at the reward to the risk, and that's going to be based on looking at that uh, risk first. Now that's that's a, a key step, and then then I can uh, then select what option strategy that I might want to use. So one of the best ways to achieve this, as far as selecting the strategy or option strategy, is to know which strategies are out there and available to you, understand how they work, and then select the one that's gonna be best suited for the market environment you're trading and your specific trading goals. So with the butterfly, you can do it with any size account. You could, uh, I've done these, you know, uh, 20,000 contracts for a big, huge uh, a hedge fund that was doing an oil butterfly. They did about 20,000, or you could do it with one contract. So. You know, small retail investors like ourselves, we can do butterflies on, you know, pretty much anything. So it's a great structure for you to add to your, again, your portfolio of trading. Now, when we look at the different strategies of the butterfly, there's a variation of butterflies. And so I kind of call it the butterfly family. And the thing that they have in common is they both have a selling component to it, which uh, they're basically taking advantage of selling time and selling volatility, which brings in premium and which also reduce your theta decay or creates a positive theta trade. So when we look at the butterfly family, you could do, you, you have long call or put butterflies. You have what we call a broken wing butterfly, which you use calls or put, sometimes it's referred to as a skip strike butterfly. You've got what I call the ninja butterfly, which is an unbalanced ratio butterfly. The iron butterfly, which is really good for really big premium collecting strategy. And then you've got a whole nother category of hedging using uh, the butterflies for defensive strategies there. And then the cousin, the long contour. So a lot of good variations for the different kind of uh, environment you're trading. So you can go to the different types of butterflies. So let's take a review of some of the trades and get a better feel for how these things work. Now, the other thing with the butterfly spread is you can adjust your risk or you can, or you will adjust your risk and your profit based on the wingspan that you're you know, using on the butterfly. So for example here, this is a butterfly structure. If you were you know, a collector of butterflies, it's gonna be easier maybe for you to collect butterflies with a big wide net, right? So you could use a big wide net or a small net. So which one's gonna be easier? Probably a big wide you know, net. So it's gonna capture the butterfly easier. So we can do the same kind of principle or concept with the butterfly. So if we want a big profit zone or big, you know, kind of net to capture profit, we can really widen out a butterfly, make it really wide, which increases the at, at risk capital. But again, you have a bigger zone for profit. Or if you really want to tighten up your risk reward, you can make it a really narrow wing butterfly, which you have very little risk. And if you get it wrong, it's kind of like what I call a lotto trade. So we can really do some great things with the butterfly spread width. So let's take a look. The first one we're gonna look at is a narrow wing butterfly. So this will be like $10 wide or $100 per spread width. And the other great thing, butterflies are great with ETFs like SPY or uh, QQQ or IWM. They're also great for the uh, index options like SPX or uh, NDX, RUT, things like that. Uh, and also you can do futures that you, so you can pretty much do anything, but the ETFs are great, especially the SPY, QQQ and IWM. We do a lot with those two, uh, those three uh, uh, ETFs. So this first one is, uh, to give you an idea, is a really narrow wing butterfly. And this is gonna be a targeted trade again. So we're gonna target here in this example, uh, 273. So uh, SPY at this time was trading at 267. So right here, and again, I like to use Fibonacci and, and uh, moving averages and unusual option activity for targets. So there was a lot of good price action. And, uh, you know, we had our Fib level right here at this uh, 273 level. So this was the target of the trade. So to target this trade, we're going to do it super, super low risk. And so we're going to do this uh, using this narrowing butterfly uh, on SPY. So we go through this example. Uh, again, we're going to, it's trading at 267. This is an upside move, so we're going to use calls. So we're going to target 273, that area there. So went long the 272 call, sold the 273, then sold the 273, sold the, uh, bought the, the 274. 
So here's your target, the body and the butterfly. That's where the butterfly gets its name from, the body. And these are your wings, so it's a long butterfly. So you can see here, this cost of this trade was super low. It was only 10 cents or $10. That's the maximum risk. So if everything went uh, wrong and it went up or down, whatever, you'd lose $10. Now the potential profit is $90. So if you take the spread width of a dollar between the strikes, which is $100 less that cost, theoretically you can make $90 at expiration if it pins right there at the body, and that's a 900% return. Now this made two days later $70, which was a 700% return. So just think about that. You know, you, you hear somebody say, "Hey, I just made a 700% return." And you look at them thinking they're, you know, they're lying to you, but that's the case with these butterflies. All the time you can make these types of returns because you lower that risk so dramatically. So that's a, the concept there. Now, here is the butterfly going out. So right here, it's going out right there at 273, very close to it, but not perfectly pinned. And so you can see here it went from 10 cents debit or ten dollars to 80 cents or 80 dollars. And there's your profit of $70 per butterfly spread on that risk of $10, which is a 700% return. And these can be very short duration, one day to two weeks, that kind of duration. So again, your big advantage is time decay, volatility collapse, and a high return on your capital at risk. So very low capital at risk makes fantastic high returns. So that's an example of a narrowing butterfly. Now this next one is really, really fantastic, really cool because this is a wider wing butterfly. So we've been doing, you know, some on the, like the IWM or QQQ, we've been doing wider wing butterflies anywhere from $10 wide to $20. So that'd be like, uh, you know, $1,000 wide to $2,000 wide because it gives us again, that big wide profit zone. So if we, you know, we have a market that's going down or market going up, we widen out that butterfly and we can participate in it pretty easy without having to have that much of a price movement. So we did this with a very wide wing butterfly. And let me uh, erase this and I'll show you. So this was uh, not quite there yet. So these are again, structured for defined risk and hedging. Great, always used for targeted directional swing trades. This is kind of primarily how you use them. Great for pinning trades. This is where a pinning trade is where, you know, you have a, an option expiration, you have a strike that the, uh, you know, the underlying security goes out at, and we call that a pinning strike where it pins. And typically, we like to do this on a monthly expiration when the institutions are usually in the monthly options. So great for that. Great again for high volatility markets when you're, you know, uncertain as far as the market direction up or down, and, and you don't want to take a lot of risk. This is a great way to do it. Uh, high price stocks, fantastic for high price stocks. So if you wanted to trade Amazon or Tesla, you can trade those with very little capital at risk by doing the butterfly. Trade duration anywhere, you know, one day, we do these for one day, if we want to take a short term move to two weeks. So two weeks is about the, the you know, the, the as far out as I like to go, and always going to give you a positive theta. So you're not going to have time to cave the markets turning sideways on you. And you're going to get returns of capital of two to one to 10 to one and sometimes even higher than that. So here's the, the trade that we did just a week back. And this uh, I have an alert service that sends out these trades. So this is what it would you know, look like if you were in the alert services, the text that was sent out. So this was uh, uh, using a uh, short on uh, IWM, the Russell 2000. And we did this with a butterfly to keep our risk very low. So this was on the 20th of January and, and IWM was trading at 206.65. So the alert service sent out this text alert to the members. So it says new IWM short trading at 206.65. Says buy to open a butterfly IWM 28 January series, the 205, 195, 185. So it's $10 spread between. Them. All right. So for an, for a cost of a dollar 80 around a dollar 80. So that'd be $180 max risk if you did one spread. And then I put in the profit targets and stop loss, et cetera. Now this thing, you know, went down and it just really did great for performance, but here it was on the 28th at expiration. It was almost, it was pretty close to max profit. And it said, I said, it sent out this alert update, trade at 192. If long put butterfly, the Jan 28th, 
205-195-185 expires today, make sure to take your profit. All right, so that's what you would get to see if you were a member of the alert service. So let's take a look at the butterfly. So here was the trade setup. It was, it was set up here on the 20th, right here. And it was starting to break down below this Fibonacci, this 50% retracement level here. So we went short, and we went short though with a really low risk trade using a butterfly targeting down to you know 195 targeting right in, in this range here but we had a big huge wide butterfly to give us profit potential if we're anywhere close so that's the beauty of it so we did this ten dollars wide all right so what we did was the target was to 195 so that's the body of the butterfly right here so we bought, it was trading at 206.65. So at that point in time, we bought the 205 put, sold the 195 put, sold the 195 put again, bought the 185 put. So we had a wide $10 or $1,000 wide butterfly like this. All right. So that with a very low cost of $177 or $1.77 debit cost here, $177 per spread. That's it. Now, the potential max profit on this is huge. So if you take a thousand minus the cost of your trade, theoretically, the difference is your profit, 823 at expiration. So if expiration goes out right at 195, you would make $823 on that risk of 177. That's a 465% return, or you're risking a dollar to make $4.65. So that's the risk reward that we always look at first. Now, even if we come in and we make $50 or $100 or $200, that's still a great return. If you made $200, that's over 100% return. Now, here it is going out on the 28th, all right? So this thing, we had profit galore on this trade. So here it was going out on the 28th. So it was, uh, you know, here was the spread. Trade at the execution and entry was $1.77. So at this point in time, this is the, in the morning uh, on the 28th. That's the expiration date. And so you can see the expiration date here. So at that point in time, it was trading at 192.80. So it was it overshot the 195 uh, you know, body, which is fine, but we still have this huge profit zone all the way to here. This is the break even over here. See how wide that is? So anywhere in between here, we make money. So here, and then all that area here, that's still uh, time decay and volatility, which is still in the spread. So that's still potential profit. And here you can see theta still has a, over $82 of potential data decay that we could strip out for profit. So, you know, about 10 o'clock in the morning, this was uh, trading at 192.80 and it was up at $520 per butterfly spread on that risk of 177. So at that point in time, it was up 294% return. Now, if you've done, let's say you shorted, you know, and you went uh, just short of the QQQ shares and you got down to that 192.80 you would have had a gain of 6.7%, but here your gain is 294% return versus 6.7, and your risk is just $177 per spread. So that's what I like about it so much. Now here it is, the same spread in the afternoon. All right, so this is where it is close to going out during the day expiration. See how tight it's tightened up? There's barely any left of time value or, uh, or uh, volatility left in the spread. So the same day, the 28th, now is trading closer back to the body of the butterfly. So you get that benefit right here. So now it went from 177, now it was up to 881. So it was up to uh, $704 per spread on 177. So you can see that the stress of these trades are very, very low. Because once you get into it, you, you know, if you can tolerate your potential loss, of 177 bucks, or sometimes even we'll do these things for $50 or, or $30, you know, so it makes your stress a lot less than if you're doing outright shares or maybe outright futures, which your loss could be a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, or you know, even more if you're doing shares. So that's the thing that I really like about these two strategies for uncertain market conditions. But you'll, you'll, once you start doing these, you'll probably say, let's just do these all the time. So that's look there. Now the next uh, one is, you know, what I call hedge trading management. And this is what we call opportunistic hedge trading management. So this is an example of a trade that started out on QQQ where we were long a put debit spread, so we're short, and then we adjusted it to 
enhance what I call the enhance the trade by either uh, increasing our uh, you know our uh, positive data, making it have less data decay, so po more positive data, and also enhancing it, make it lower capital at risk. And so in this example, what we look for is to do it as a free trade. And so we're looking always when we do a trade, the setup, we're always looking or thinking one or two steps ahead after the trade, even before the trade is on. So just like playing cards or chess, you know, when you make a move, you're always thinking of the next two or three moves ahead, uh, kind of a what if scenario. So that's how you should look at these trades. So here's the long Condor debit spread hedge on QQQ. Again, structured for defined, low risk, great for hedging, great for directional swing trades, gives you a wide profit zone right here. Uh, great for high volatility markets because we keep our risks super low. Trade duration one to three weeks, positive data, no time decay. And returns are typically you can have two, three, four, five to one when, once you convert or do a long condor. So here's the trade setup. The original trade was doing a put debit spread right here. So when it's breaking down here, we did a put debit spread right here. And then thinking one or two steps ahead, we had a target. Okay, we we're thinking, okay, what if it moves down to this area here, the next support area about you know 354, 55? Can we adjust this trade into a lower cost trade, lower capital risk, and perhaps even uh, you know adjust it to a trade with zero risk? And that's what we were able to do. So it traded down to 354, and at that point in time, we were able to adjust this by selling a bull put credit spread that adjusted it to a free trade. And then at expiration, we had a max profit. So let me walk you through this trade. Okay, so the original trade setup, trade one, was doing a put debit spread, okay? A good trade here. So this was long, the 6 October um, 364 put, short the 360 put. So nice, you know, put debit spread like that. All right, so max risk on this was $121. So nice low risk as well. And the max profit, so $4 wide spread, less your cost of trade. And this could theoretically make $279 if it closed above or below that put uh, short strike. So that would be a 230% return, not bad. Uh, uh, risk a dollar to make $2.30. But what we're doing is we're always looking to see, okay, if it was to move down directly where we wanted to go on this trade, can we enhance the trade by increasing our positive data, making it more data positive, and also in de decreasing our capital at risk? So can we reduce our risk from 121? And in this one, we reduce our risk zero actually to a credit. I'll show you how. But again, it's that concept of thinking uh, one or two steps ahead. So trade one, uh, again, just backing up in here, was to put debit spread right here. Put debit spread. So the uh, uh, oh, hold on a second. Let me get my pointer tool right, right here. So trade one was right here, long the 364, put short the 360 at a dollar 21. And then when it dropped down to 354, we were thinking one or two steps ahead. So at that point in time, on the first of October, we then shorted, sold the October 6 same uh, option spread duration or uh, series. The 354 put bought the 350. So that's a bull put credit spread, right? And brought in $141 credit. Okay, so if you look at that, the cost here of the original trade was 121, but when it dropped down, we were able to bring in a credit of 141. So now we have zero risk. We actually have $20 credit on what we call here is a long put condor. So zero risk, actually $20. So if this thing went straight up, or straight down, we are guaranteed locked in to make at least $20. Now, if it goes out between these two spreads, that's the max profit, and that would have been $420 on zero risk. So on the first, when we originally adjusted it, we took some profit. So at that point in time, it was $152 profit plus the credit. So up $172 per spread on zero risk. But the beauty was at expiration, on the six, it was trading at 359, right between these two short strikes of the spread. So there's a max profit trade of $420 on zero risk. So that's the beauty of it. So opportunistic uh, hedge trading management. 
Now, uh, you can see here with the, the risk profile going out, you can see here what, what it was. So max loss, no no loss. So it's a credit of 20, max profit 420. So here's your what it looked like here. So law of the 364, 60 put spread and then sold the bull put press spread here. So really great structure uh, for this trade. And let me get rid of this, erase that. So let me make sure if I have any questions here and put the chat box up. All right, not seeing anything so far. All right, so um, if you know if you'd like to learn more how to master these high reward, low risk option strategies that can work in any market environment, especially markets like this that we're currently in, I've got a really great uh, you know package for everybody here. If you'd like to take a look at it, hopefully you'll uh, sign up. So this is my options master's course that I did uh, uh, live and recorded. So this is a uh, just 100% on my butterfly long condor course, option master's course on these two strategies uh, for profit and hedging. So this course uh, turned out after the course and the Q and A's that we had with it, uh, seven plus hour course, uh, strictly 100% on the butterfly long condor. And let me give you the link here. Uh, maybe sh uh, you can put sure you can put this link in for everybody to take advantage of this if you'd like to. Here's the link here. So it's the link you can type it in as well. It's power, uh, www.powercycletrading.com forward slash trade one. All right, so for this, if you're interested, you'll get, uh, I'll show you everything you'll get. So you'll get the live, uh, I'm not live, but the recorded course on the managers forever. And, um, You'll get the course, right? A seven plus hour course. Uh, this is a, you'll get my full PowerPoint presentation. These are very detailed, 456 page PowerPoint. Uh, the course modules, the, the course is broken down in modules of uh, 30 minutes or less. So it's like a chapter of book. You, the course will be in modules so you can go back and find what you know module you need help with. Plus you're gonna get six enrollment bonuses. So the total value uh, over a thousand dollars here. So first off, here's everything you'll get. The, the main thing is you're gonna get the course. So if you look at my website, I'll show you here in a minute, go to powercycletrading.com. This course is on my site for sale uh, for $4.97, all right? But you're gonna get everything here, not $4.97, you're gonna get everything $1.97 plus these bonuses. So you're gonna get my recorded course that I did uh, not too long ago start trading options today. So this is an options beginners course that's available. I sell that for 197. And then for additional support and help to you, uh, once you take the look at the course or whatever, I'm going to give you a 30 day trial membership. You can start whenever you want to my trading club. So this will you know give you access to my virtual trading room open each and every day during the week. So if you have a question on the course or a question on a trade, you can come in and ask whatever question you might have. So that's not, it's 97 a month. And if you stay on, that'll be 97 a month for you, but you're gonna get 30 day trial. And again, you can start this when you want. So if you wanna do the course first and then have questions, come, you know, start your membership a week or two weeks out. The, then we'll do, I'll send you a link. We'll do a live follow up Q and A, which will also be recorded. So additional support for you there. And then you're gonna get uh, my course on the option Greeks called the how the pros use the Greeks. So this is another great little course on option Greeks that you're going to get with videos and uh, uh, PowerPoint on that. And then you're going to get my option strategy manifesto, 15 different option strategies, a guide to different strategies there in my power Greek tool guide that you can print out and put on your desktop. So a lot of great stuff there, kind of a everything that you need to make yourself successful or get yourself started uh, trading options. So, kind of the option trading package. Um, and then let me show you the bonuses. Let me erase this here real quick. All right, so first off, you'll get the Butterfly Long Condor Options Master's course. So seven hour recorded course, easy to view, 30 minute modules. All right, and it comes with the PowerPoint of the course, very detailed with lots of trading examples. So it's kind of what I call my step-by-step -step butterfly long condor blueprint course. Shows you how you can use these for income, high reward, high reward, low risk trades, non-directional or directional and hedging and more. So that's a big part. Now, part one, we start out, I always like to start with the Greeks to show you, you know, the vital 
importance of the Greeks that are important to these particular types of strategies. So we start with the Greeks that are important, go through time decay, the importance of that, how it impacts the butterfly along condor, then volatility, the other pricing component, how it impacts the butterfly along condor through what we call volatility crush, and then how option pricing works and the effects that it has on the butterfly and condor based on time and uh, volatility crush. Then part of the course here is another great part in the course that I put in was my price target mapping using Fibonacci because before you ever put on any trade, we want to set up price targets. And I use this, what I call price target mapping. So go through here in the course what that is and how we use that to establish profit targets or targets to trade to. So target mapping. So you'll get that uh, in the course. So it's a very extensive course. And then part two, we get into the meat and potatoes of the course. So how, why, and when would you use to go through every variation of a butterfly that you could use? How, why, and when would you use a long call or put butterfly? What we call the wide wing butterfly, a broken wing butterfly, a ratio butterfly, a broken wing ratio butterfly, the iron butterfly, vacation butterfly, long condor. So every one of these has gone through with examples in detail, in detail, how these are used, and so how, why, when would you use the variation there? So you'll get a feel for which one to use or not to use, and, and then you'll probably get to a point where you find the ones that you like the best. All right, then we get to what are the best option timeframes to use to capitalize on these? Should you go out a day, two days, 10 days, a week, or a month? How do, how do you structure these trade setups where you can get that 10 to 1 or higher return on your risk? So you can get, literally put out $10 of risk to, to make maybe 900% return, things like that. And then how do you profit from, again, that volatility crush and uh, time decay and theta? So you're going to really uh, have that covered in detail so you'll know. And then another really fun part of the course, something that will give you potential for additional stream of income, is monthly expiration, what we call option penning. So every month we have option expiration on the monthlies. So 12 times a year, and this is what we call option pinning. So trying to figure out where an option uh, uh, underlying security would go out at expiration and pin. And so to do this, we use for, if we get a good selection of where it could possibly go out and pin, we'll use a butterfly to trade that because there's super low risk. So we'll base this pinning activity on target analysis using Unusual Option Activity and Fibonacci. So you'll learn that in the course. So this course, you're getting, getting a lot of good detailed content as far as, you know, your trading in general. And then we go, go into the ne next chapter is the long condor. So the major trading advantages and differences of the long condor spread that can provide you returns of 100, 200, 300 percent. So don't get this confused with an iron condor. This is what we call the long condor. So a totally different animal that you'll learn in the course. And then how, why, and when would you use this long option condor? And then, last but not least, probably the biggest part of the course is hedging, okay? Progression of hedging. So how you can take, you know, hedge a, a, a stock share or a call or put, and then just the progressions of hedging into a butterfly or a long condor hedge or something else. So how to use the butterfly long condor hedge to hedge a core position how to use the butterfly long condor to, to defend the vertical credit spread or debit spread. So really great defensive strategies here that you'll learn. And then you'll learn step-by-step -step checklists on when and how to take the butterfly on and off, execution risk management, and then what is exchange, you know, the exchange funds use, extraded funds use, what is assignment risk, expiration, auto exercise, what those are, how to avoid exercise, et cetera, plus a 58 page trading library of butterflies and long condors you can go back and look at. So really extensive course, a uh, little feedback. This is uh, from Alicia said, I've never seen anyone explain options like this. Excellent. This is exactly what I've been looking for. Very informative. No one has anything like this. Wish I'd found you sooner, but I'm glad I found you now, Alicia. And Pam, who earlier got run over with credit spread, said, excellent class, Larry, as usual. You under promise over deliver. Wish I'd known how to do this hedging before I lost so much money on credit spreads. So your, your option bonanzas, which I call here, you're gonna get bonus one, start trading options, the option beginners course here. These are listed on my website if you, you know, come in and buy it later. So it's a comprehensive, easy to understand 
uh, Option Beginners course, take you through the benefits of options versus stocks, insider tips you want to know before options are being traded, know how option basics work, puts versus calls, uh, when is expiration, expiration, how does that work, and then take you through really two nice, uh, you kind of beginning option strategies, the covered call and then the uh, protective put, which is the income protective caller strategy. So really great complimentary uh, uh, you know, trading course there. And then again, this is a really big bonus here is to give you 30 day trial membership. You can start whenever you want. So this will give you or allow you to come in and ask questions. So I've got a virtual trading room here, open every day during the week, 9.30, 10.30 Eastern, Monday through Friday. So it's me and me only. So you come in and have a question, come in and ask, or if we're doing some trade setups, you'll see how, how we're doing those and what we're doing. Then every Tuesday we do a, a, a Q and A, which is live and recorded right here. And then I do a daily uh, market video review every day after the market closed. These are archived. So I kind of go through my uh, perspective of the market, what we're doing, what my outlook is. So you have that every night after the close. Have a nice traders education vault that you can go in and look at free content there. And then everything on my website, you get 60 percent discounts on everything there. So a lot of great uh, benefits and a uh, nice comment from David. He said, this is the best serv uh, service ever. Been enjoying daily sessions and making money to increase my retirement account. Seriously consider joining Larry's uh, for a truly rewarding educational uh, that has real uh, benefits to it. Uh, so that was a really nice feedback from David. One of the many that we've had. And uh, let's see, what else? Let me get this erased. So then you're going to get bonus three. We'll do a live follow-up Q&A. We'll send you out a link to this probably in a week or two weeks out. Give you time to go through the course. And then again, don't forget, you get 30-day trial membership to the trading club for additional questions. Then you're going to get my how the pros use the Greeks to make money. It's a tutorial, 60-page guide with videos on the option Greeks, option uh, uh, pricing, market maker secrets, standard deviation, option delta, and probabilities. And then another little nice bonus, 15 option strategy guys. So 15 option different strategies. What is a back ratio spread? How does that work? You know, what is a short butterfly? What is a long iron butterfly? What is a uh, long straddle, a short straddle, et cetera? So you get all of this additional nice option information. And then my simple and brief option reference guide that you can print out, put on your desktop of the Greeks. So you'll have that nice and handy. So there's everything you'll get. And uh, again, you can start the trading club whenever you want. And uh, hopefully you'll you'll continue on with this. And uh, I think you'll get a lot for your money and learn a lot. Uh, and I'll show you, let's see here, um, what it looks like the on my website. Let me pull that up real quick. So these courses that I show you here are on my website, but they're the full retail. Um, Price, so you know if you get it here today, you're they're going to get all usually. this. Larry, they're going to get all this for 197 dollars. That's true. Yeah, that's correct. Wow, yeah. I put that link in the chat. So if you go here, you can see courses, trading courses. Here, here are all the courses, but here's that butterfly course that you're going to get for 197 plus all the other bonuses. I have lots of, I've been trading options for a long time. So I've done a lot of these courses I continuously do. So here's the last one uh, right here. So if you were to go to the website, here's that butterfly course, you'd be paying uh, 497. And uh, today you're getting that plus other courses and, and good stuff for 197. And here's my trading software. You'll get 60% discounts on anything on our website. So any of my trading software that I developed here, so for thinkorswim trade station ninja trader uh wealth charts trading view etc so i've got uh, all that stuff so a lot of good stuff hopefully That's you'll amazing. take advantage of it all and i appreciate you giving me the time to be here today i really appreciate you joining us and uh folks i've put the um link in the chat you did have two questions that probably want to be answered. Okay. And um, one one is when you make the adjustment with the credit spread, doesn't that require an additional margin require on that spread? Margin uh, well, rec yeah, on it, that spread? It, yeah, it would, but it would just be the margin that you would owe. So it's it's a, it's not very much if you consider 
the margin versus what you can lose. If you look at, an, if you have a negative risk ratio, so for example, if you did a credit spread, for example here, if you did a credit spread like I showed you earlier, and uh, I can draw this thing, and you, let's say you did a credit spread, and you know, I showed you an example earlier, it was a thousand dollar wide spread, and you were able to bring in $200 credit, right? So your risk though is the difference. Uh -huh. So your, your risk, you're risking $800, to make 200, so it's what we call a negative risk ratio. So if I were to adjust this to butterfly, maybe I'd have to put up, uh, you know, $100 or, or $200 margin, but that's sure a lot better than losing potentially 800. So it's a it's a very small trade off, and actually the margin would be a lot less than that. Perfect. The margin is just the difference. All right, so it's not even worth talking about because if you can if you can adjust and reduce your trade risk. You're, you should be willing to do that all day long. Okay, fantastic. I really appreciate you coming out. I think this has been really informative and I hope everyone will take a look and go check out that uh, link that we put there. That offer is pretty phenomenal. So- Thank you so much. I mean, come on, let's, let's go. Thank you for giving them such a great deal for being on the Traders Exclusive webinar. You're and I welcome. hope you'll come Thanks back again. Uh, I'd love to. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Ciao. All right. And we're going to All right. Our next expert coming. He's going to be finishing up the day here. We've learned a lot and you guys have really stuck in there. Uh, Paul Lang of Discipline Trading Strategies, LLC, talking to us about three key concepts to successful trading. And one of the things that really caught my eye was when we're learning or struggling, we tend to focus on the wrong things while we're trying to improve. So having um, someone give us some training on how to focus on the right things is going to be pretty special. So I want to let you know that um, Paul started Discipline Trading Strategies in August of 2017. Uh, Discipline Trading Strategies is a site for traders and investors. He runs a very popular day trading room and also publishes the Long-Term Trader, a portfolio for hands-off long-term investors. He also provides a ton of free information on the DTS free stuff page. And I'm not kidding you. It is a ton of stuff. And he gives assistance to new people on his website and the best seminar program for those interested. So Paul is a very experienced trader and investor with 20 plus years in the trenches every day. He spent many years at Pristine Trading as the senior instructor and trading room moderator before opening DTS. The concept is not to run a business, but just have fun providing a serious place for traders, both new and experienced. Thank you for being with us, Paul. I think you are self-muted. I will make you the presenter. -ter. Are you there? There we go. Hi, everybody. I am here. I can hear you. Let me pull Awesome, my welcome. Thanks for being with us today. Oh, and we got people saying, hello, Paul. <laughs> Daniel Page is here. Hi, everyone. I never can see <laughs> you guys type in this format. Am I supposed to be able to see that, Sherry? Am I supposed to be able to see them? Uh, you, you could. I could make you be able to see it. Here okay. we go. You All right. should, it doesn't matter you should a have lot a new because panel. I was kind of pushed for time. All right. Do you have my slides up there? I have uh, a desktop that I'm seeing. I've got a, a Word doc and a slideshow. How about that one? Yes, very good. That's it? We're in business. I'm going to mute Freaky myself and you training. take it away. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. That's what we've got. Great. Hi everyone. Oh, sure. I gave you some links too. Of, you know, the opening minutes here. You could probably dump those out there when I mention the things. Um, so ready? Let me get started. It went right, right, right back. It went. What? Okay, just a second. Um, it did go back to the other screen for some reason. Yeah. It was, well, it never was supposed to be on that one. It's weird. 
Is it now right? No, I'm still seeing your um, PowerPoint and your doc. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I don't know about this, Sherry. Oh, clean. How about this? I think you might be picking the wrong monitor. Well, I picked both. It, it only wants to show the one for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, it's it's only going to show one. It'll only let you show one screen. Yeah, I know. I It'll know. only let I you show one monitor. You practiced an hour ago. I didn't change a thing. Oh, yeah. I you know. got it now? No? <laughs> now, yes, 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 yes. Yes? And it's moving? Yes, I see three. Key. Yes, it is. Two quick discussions? Yes. Right? I think we're good to go now. Got it. I will discuss. Is that who it says? Is that what it says, Sherry? Yes. Okay. All right. Whew. Well, let's get going, folks, because this isn't very long, and I want to get a lot of things across to you. Just a couple preliminary slides. First of all, I'll discuss who I will. Sherry introduced me a little bit, but I don't like to really introduce myself or talk a lot about me because I figure if you don't like what I have to say, you could care less. And if you do like what I have to say, you probably could still care less. You'll look me up at some point. So let's talk about me at a slide later if you even want to at all. I offer a tremendous amount of free quality information at the DTS free stuff page. And Sherry, if you could dump that link out there, that would be great. Uh, more than you'll find anywhere. I claim this to be the greatest source of quality free information for trading on the internet anywhere. I know there's probably bigger sites, but it's just kind of garbage definitions, things that don't help you. You could spend an entire week there. And I want to point out when you're there, it's free. You can go there now. You don't have to do anything but go to the website. And you don't even have to become any kind of member to visit this. When you go there, there's only so much on that page. There's an archive page also. Everything that DTS has put out since it began four and a half years ago is there, but not all of it is on that front page because it's too much. So you got to go to the archive page to find all the rest of it. And you can spend an entire week there, trust me. If you're confused when you go there, Start off by looking at the presentations in the Hall of Fame section. Those are the four presentations that were voted on by DTS members as being the best presentations at that time. So that's a good spot to start. One of the things I like about it is it lets you get to know me a little bit. If you eventually are going to go on and want to get trained in technical analysis or whatever, it's very important you know the person, you know your mentor, so to speak. If you're just signing up for a month or something, it doesn't matter because you can cancel that month, you don't lose anything. When you're making a commitment to learn something, it's good you get to know the person and what better way than to hear me teaching a whole variety of subjects throughout the website. So that's a main reason it's there. There are paid for services at DTS, but there's never a sale at DTS. I don't have any deals for you today, no offers. I'm gonna talk until about five minutes until my time is up, which I think is four o'clock. And then I'm gonna leave five minutes for questions. There's no specials or anything, all I'm gonna have for you. I hope you're not disappointed about that, but all I'm gonna have for you is that website with free stuff on it my email if you want to talk with me, if you want to get together and discuss, you know, even if you are looking to try and learn on your own, I try doing that. I'll try and point you in the right directions, give you what help I can. A lot of people I find are either new and not really wanting to learn for real for maybe a couple of years. I get a lot of people who follow me for a couple of years and all of a sudden one day, boom, they're in the trading room where they sign up for a seminar program just like that. And there's some people who want to try to learn on their own. And that's that's great. And, you know, See how you see how it goes for you, and I'm here to help you either way. No deals, no offers, no sales. I know many of you are not ready yet or want to learn to try on your own. I'll help you do that. If when you are ready, remember there are no quick fixes to learning to trade. One of the biggest things I've done in the pre other presentations on this, but one of the biggest downfalls to me for a lot of traders is looking for what we call the holy grail. It's right over here. There is no holy grail. And all of you that are here listening to me, I can intelligently presume that you are above average people because you're here at some kind of financial seminar, you have some money to either invest or you have time to trade, whatever it is, you're already just by that definition, the top 10% of the world. Think about it, there is no quick fix to this. There, there is no magical indicator, just, just think about it. You know that's the case. If there was, I'd use it and I'd share it with you, I'd tell it to you. There is no quick fix, there is no magic, there is no technical indicator, there is no special software program. This is like any other profession, just learning what to do. And in this case, learning what to do means understanding how to read a chart. That's what you have to learn, period. That's the title slide. I'm not gonna go over that because that was pretty much in your email, but this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna review a whole list of successful concepts that'll be presented. 
And then I'm going to focus in on the top three as good as I can during this time. This is based on a presentation I did a couple months ago at DTS where I went through a whole list of stuff. I'm going to show you that list, but what I thought I'd do today for a great follow-up is really try and focus in on the top three. Kind of hard, though, because I hate to leave anyone off. It's like trying to name your favorite children or who your favorite children are. It's hard to leave one off the list, so I'm going to do the best that I can. A couple introductory comments real quick before I get to the list. If you're consistently profitable, don't be offended by anything tonight that I'm discussing. If you're profitable, congratulations, that's great. I'm talking to a, a bulk of people that are learning or struggling or can't figure out what's wrong. The categories of concepts cover the vast majority, but there are always exceptions. If you are struggling, start to get real about what you are doing. Are you making headway on an objective basis? That is the question. You know, I talk to so many people that are, are trying to learn on their own, and that's great. Uh, hats off to you. Like I said, I tried it, but they've been trying for two years and they're making zero progress. I mean, at some point you have to be realistic and say, you know what, you have spent 10 times what it would have cost you to learn how to trade by having somebody teach you. You know, what's the sense of doing that? One more clarification. Who am I talking to tonight? In other words, where does this list begin? I'm talking about three of the greatest trading concepts, but who am I talking to when I say that? In other words, what level are we at? Obviously, the three greatest trading concepts for somebody who is just starting to figure out how to trade are different than somebody who's experienced. So obviously, I'm not talking about brand new people. I'm talking about people, I, I'm not, I'm talking to everyone who feels that they need some help. They're not making money, they're not happy with their progress. If you're brand new, I'm talking to you because all this is something you'll have to digest eventually. If you are brand new, obviously, the first key concepts are to get an education, start off properly, understand risk amounts, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm not here for that basic stuff. You can figure that out or you can, you know, die trying to figure out. But obviously that's true when you're brand new. I'm talking about somebody who figures that they, they, um, they start off, let's say we're starting with people who consider themselves educated in trading, but can't figure out what is wrong. I talked to a lot of people in this category. If you are somebody who feels you know the charts it feels that you get things moving in the right direction, but every week as a day trader, every month as a swing trader, you just, you just break even. And it's that way week after week, month after month, you're probably in this category. And the key thing to say is, is anything really changing? A lot of people say, well, yeah, I did this, this, this wrong, but I'll be better next month. And the next month's the same story. So just be aware of where you are and if you want to improve. So here's the list. And yes, there are going to be some charts here uh, demonstrating each of the key three concepts that I wanted to point out to you. So those of you that love charts, we'll get to see some charts in just a minute. Number one, these are the whole list. There's eight key concepts here, and I'll tell you which ones we're going to focus in on. Number one, strategically, no two traders are ever the same. This is concept is taken from a book called Market Wizards. And I'm not going to go through the whole story. But the bottom line is that it, there's absolutely no question that there is no single magic formula. There is no one magic strategy. There is no one thing that all successful traders do in terms of a, a technical concept. You learn how to read a chart, and just like you, you learn all the words in the English language, and you can make infinite number of sentences, infinite stories, infinite pages to a book. There's no set formula for how you have to put those words together. And it's the same thing on a chart. There's a lot of different things that you can do. It's not even crazy for one trader, a good trader to say, I'm taking this long from A to B. And for another trader to say, well, I'm gonna short it at B. That can make sense sometimes. So there's different ways to look at things. Number two, most important trading concepts. Structure, this is gonna be one of the top three. So I'm going to let that go because we're gonna talk about it in just a second. Management must be chill. That is also gonna be a top three. So I'll let that go for the moment. Aggressiveness, people probably shirk when I say this. Yes, I feel that one of the key concepts to being a successful trader investor is to be, to understand a certain amount of aggressiveness is needed. If you're always super safe, if you're always hedging, if you're always afraid of everything, you're never gonna make money. It's, it's, that's the definition of perpetual break even. Yes, you have to learn what you're doing first, but then when the time is right, you have to be aggressive to make money to some degree. This, I actually, I hated to leave off the list. I put it in there as number four. I doubt I'm gonna have time to get to it, but there's a slide about aggressiveness. It's number four on my list. Patience, including FOMO. You guys know what FOMO is? Anybody know what FOMO is? Yeah. 
you guys typing there? Oh, hey, I think I, I think I see where you guys are typing. Ah, ah, there you. I, I see you guys typing. Great, fear of missing out. Exactly right. Probably one of the biggest things. Now, patients FOMO. This is going to be one of the top three. This is number three. So I don't, I don't want to go into a lot of detail here, but if you feel you know the charts and yet you're not making money, I'd be willing to bet you that patient slash FOMO is one of your biggest demons. Is one of the reasons you're probably losing money, lack of patience. If you want a quick proof of that, I mean, I can anything I'm saying, I, you know, this is from just lots of experience with myself, with teaching lots of people, I can kind of prove it to you. Let me ask, ask you guys a quick question. Now I can see you type. When you do stop out of a trade, I'm not asking how often you stop out, but what I'm saying, when you do stop out, is it typically very early on in the trade? And again, when I say trade, I don't care if you're day trading or swing trading or long term. Is it fairly early in the trade or is it way later in the trade? If you stop out, right, early. Everybody's going to say early. Why is that? Conrad, why is it early? Because what happened? You got in a little too early. Exactly. Which means you didn't have the patience to wait, to wait for the right area or you didn't know the right area, right? So real killer for traders. All right. Next one here, number six round, don't chase shiny objects. Good trading is boring. But again, I hate to leave this one off. It's like taking one of my sons and saying you're not my favorite. This is so important. So many new traders feel that they have to be like part of some meme group or, or look for the stocks that go up 20% a day. That's garbage. You don't make money doing that. Sure, you can. That's why I call them shiny objects. But to the extent that they have big moves, they have big wide stops, and they're very unreliable. You make money by boring trading. You look for quality setups with precision, and you'll make more money than trading the hot stock of the day. It's hard to get people off of that until they lose enough money doing it where they say, I got to try something different. You need to get over the emotional need to reduce losses and protect profits. That's RL and PP. Yes, there are times that you should reduce your loss or protect a profit, but that's based on the chart and based on your understanding of technical analysis. It's not based on your emotional fear. And again, this is one of the biggest trader killers. Any, I'm just going to take a jump out there. Any of you, number one, do you kind of see that? Do you agree with that? Do you relate to that? The emotional management of your trades is hurting you. Is that true for anybody? Number one? Yes. Very common thing. I mean, a lot of people won't admit it or a lot of people won't see it or understand it, but it is a very common thing. And last, you have to be responsible for your trading, not blaming everything on market makers, to the machines, to simply your own bad trading. Unfortunately, the truth of it is that you can define it however you want, but there there's nothing rigged about the market. Everything prints a price on a chart right in front of you. It's right there. That's not rigged. Now, if you're listening to people who are telling you stuff, if you're listening to news, if you're trying to figure out economic reports, that's your own fault. You shouldn't be looking at that. You should be looking at the truth in the market. To me, there's nothing rigged. As long as we get to see when a buyer and a seller make a deal, the price prints. As long as that happens, there's nothing rigged because I don't care about anything else. It's simply a matter that some traders aren't very good at figuring it out, so they blame it on everything, right? Yeah, exactly. Dark pools pff, doesn't make a bit of difference to me. I could care less. Yes, dark pools do 60% of the trading. Yes, when they first came out, they were fun to figure out. But I ended up making money from dark pools, not losing to them. So it's all there in front of you. If you do the same thing every day and you do it wrong every day and you keep doing it wrong every day, that's your fault, right? That's not the market's fault. All right, let's get going on the top three. Pursuing excellence here are what I consider to be the top three concepts to successful trading, but it is tough picking three as it often depends on the individual. And that's very key. You know, these three may not be your three. They may be one of the ones I'm leaving off, but this is what I feel. And when I pick these, I guess it's not based on necessarily what I think is more important because they're all important. I think it's maybe based on what I see more often than not. Number one, structure. Structure is a wide topic, and I think it's number one to me. I'm a very structured person. I'm a very organized person. I think that's critical to trading. Structure includes all of these things. The concept of multiple time frame correlation, I'll talk about that. You'll see it on the trade I'm going to show you. But what I mean by that is the way I teach things, if, if you ever were to take class from me, I teach things in a way where you get to a point on a chart and you say, you know what, you are not allowed to do certain things here. You're not allowed to do it, period. I don't care how tempting it is, how much it looks like it's going to work. This is a lower odds thing. You're not allowed to do it. Keep in mind, you can take the worst trade with the worst odds, 
and it could work that day, right? I don't, I don't even know how you really say percentage, but let's say you just took a 25% odds trade, whatever that means. Well, one out of four days, it'll work for you, okay? That doesn't mean it's a good trade. So understanding what to do, when to do it, how to do it, the way I teach it is that you always know where you are in a price pattern, not just one, but across four different price patterns. And where they intersect is where you have your highest odds because there are day traders, there are swing traders, there are long-term investors, there are mutual funds, there are hedge funds, there are sector players. There are all these people out there. And a lot of the bigger money is not in their day trading. It's in their in the bigger time frames. And if you trade against that, you're always going to be struggling. So multiple time frame correlation, but structure is more than that. It's the market pattern in general. It's timing your, your trades with the market. It's timing your entries. It's, pl it's playing planning in the money management, and then the walk away, which I call a day trading term, which is to get yourself positioned in a way that you're just where you want to be, or maybe you have a little profit on board, and maybe worst case scenario, you're going to break even that day, and you walk away and see if you can let your profits grow by not sitting there over managing them. It's a day trading term that I use. An idea for structure, and I think you'll like this chart. It was a great example. Um, I always try to use things very recently, you know, the last three, four, five days. This was from Friday, but it was just a perfect example of what I'm talking about. So I want to discuss this chart for a minute. This is Walmart from Friday, and this is the five-minute chart. And I want to start here. Now, naturally, on just the five, you can't see what's going on in the bigger picture. This is a day trade. I like to day trade. I like to long-term invest, and I kind of, kind of the extremes. I, I don't really like swing trading much. So as a day trade, I'm a kind of a bigger time frame day, day trader. I like to hold things half the day, all day long. I'm not a little scalper. I'm not on a one minute chart. There's nothing wrong with that. It's perfectly fine. Just the time frame I like is a little more laid back, kind of let something run for the day. So this was Walmart. This is the entry there, 134.81, 134.34. You can see the numbers up here. This is the room summary for that day. This is done in the, in the DTS trading room. You may look at that five minute chart and at a glance say, well, what do you mean you're going long? It looks like there's two big red bars breaking below yesterday's area. Isn't that a short? Well, we'll get back to that in a minute. Long there, target one into the yesterday's high, the prior day's high and target two, I took on a trail and I ended up going higher at the end of the day. I have no problem with that because that was a good time to get out of it. It made you know over two times what I consider to be a daily goal in terms of two, two over two risk units. And it was just once I get into it, it was just kind of a, you know, leave it alone, walk away type of thing, never a problem. The strategy I put on this is called a daily major support breakdown, failure. So let me show you what that is. Now, this five minute bar right here, if you can see that, that's breaking down so low. Well, that's this on the daily chart. Do you see that there? And that trade was taken after we broke daily major support. And you may be thinking, Paul, this sounds crazy to me. You you have a major support area. You said it yourself. You broke below it. And instead of shorting the stock, you almost instantly went long. Well, yes, because this is one of the reasons I think that people don't think technical analysis works is because they don't understand it. This is never a short. Remember I told you a minute ago that you you cannot, where's my magic pen? This stupid pen set always disappears from my desktop whenever I need it most. Is it right here? Oh, there it is. Remember I told you there's things you never do? Here's, whoops, I can't draw on here. Can I? I don't think I can draw on here. No, nope, can't draw. That's right. Through, right through here. Can you guys see my arrow? Can you see my arrow moving at least? I'm not able to see what you guys see. Can you see my arrow on the daily chart there? Yeah, okay. So here's one of those rules. This setup here, you never would short that. I don't care if it breaks this, how much it breaks it, how far it breaks it, you never ever short that. That's the second greatest mistake traders make. I know people that call this a breakdown trade. That's insane to me, that's crazy. It's not a breakdown trade. This may or may not be a long, but it's never a short. And as a day trade, what you wanna see is you wanna see that break and then see the reaction to it. That's what we always trade. So there's the daily chart. When it broke to that new low, I watched it. Well, I'll tell you the story of watching it or not. That is that tail there. So that tail on the daily chart is that break to the new low on the five. The five minute chart popped up and then it gave that little consolidation. Right in there was my entry that you can see there, 134.81, 134.34. Now, some of you may be saying, well, okay, fine. 
you took this trade, lucky trade, whatever it was. I need to explain to you just how good this trade is. You don't always find the best trades. I mean, you try every day to get the best of the best. And one of the mis misnomers about trading is, is that many traders think you're supposed to look at a chart and then say what's going to happen in that chart. In other words, some people think that if you give me a chart that I can make money from it. The truth of it is no. Most charts you give me, I'm going to say, I don't have a clue where that's going. I'm going to show you a chart in a minute on a gap. I'm going to tell you, I didn't have a clue where that was going to go. So it's not a matter of trying to figure out every chart. It's a matter of finding the patterns that you understand. Does that make sense, everybody? Does that make sense? And, and when you get that in your head, it helps a lot. It, it, it simplifies the process. We're not trying to evaluate the whole world. We're trying to simply say, hey, show me something I understand. Now, is this a trade I understand? I have to be honest with you. This trade was not on my watch list. Now, I'm in a trading room doing this. People suggest trades in the room. Some of the trades people suggest are, are pretty good. They're good watches, but it's probably maybe one in a hundred trades. Am I exaggerating, guys? Somebody in the room with me? One in 50 trades where I actually say, wow, yeah, I'm going to take that trade. Somebody suggested this trade right at that moment, right after it was starting to bounce down here on this green bar or somewhere right in here. And I just it, immediately, yes, give me the numbers. I mean, it was a matter of five seconds, trade posted trying to get into it or at least had the numbers to get into it. I wanted to get over this base. So this is a picture of something that to me is extremely high odds. And for a lot of traders, it's almost backwards. A lot of traders may have shorted this thinking it's some kind of breakdown. So it's that structure of understanding exactly what to look for, seeing the, the multiple time frame correlation here that pulls it together to make it just a near perfect trade. And the fact that part of the, the, the structure is to say there's something called a 935 reversal time very high odds that the opening five minute bar goes in the reverse direction of where the rest of the day is going. It's on a lot of setups. Very, very common thing. Morning reversal times are a very huge thing to me and a lot of people don't even know about them. So there's uh, Walmart. If you want more information on structure, there is a presentation on the free stuff page called The Walkaway. The date is here. It's, I'm gonna jot it down, it's August uh, 25th. Um, that was last year, so that was 2021. You, you'll find it on the free stuff page in pre, prior events, or uh, you may have to go to the archive page. All right. So that's kind of just a little more on the topic of if this interest, if you're interested in the topic of structure as being the one key, one of the key trading concepts. And I put here too another big thing that I thought was a great presentation on structure is something that was actually done as it, it, what's called a practical application review day for my seminar students. Now, this one, you can't see the, the thing, but I want to tell you what it was exactly. What I want, what I did was, I always say that when long-term trading, the timing of your trades is critical. And when you get to an area where you're kind of maybe not sure if you're at the top, maybe you're going to roll over, that what's key is that you never enter trades on weakness. You don't, you don't short breakdowns. Now, again, a lot of breakdowns are good plays, but you don't short a breakdown on the weekly chart that's a wide, whippy breakdown. You always short the top. And then you know, I was trying to buy the bottom. So I thought for a presentation, I would go back and look at all the trades I had put in the long-term trader to see how well I matched what I said. And what I found was almost 100% compliance with what I teach, which is to say almost every long I took was on some kind of potential low and every short that I took was on some kind of potential top. So that you're never chasing entries because that's always to your detriment because you, you don't get the risk reward and you don't necessarily even increase your odds. You can only do that, find those great entries by really knowing the charts well enough to say, here's where an entry is. So there's more information on that if you want that. Number two, number two, management should be chill. For most, it's the opposite. Most people, you don't have to give me a number one, but I can tell you, most of you, if you're day trading, you're sitting there watching your day trade continuously. Somebody taught you that you have to be careful to protect your profits. Somebody taught you, you need to make sure that you, if you can, you quickly minimize your loss because that's how successful traders work. And that's exactly wrong. It's exactly backwards. Sure, there are times that it may be acceptable to minimize a loss, not because you want to minimize the loss, not because that should be your goal, but because the chart says, okay, at this point, you should no longer be below this level. A couple of you know, my favorite sayings out there about management in general, one of them comes from me. And that is simply that if you have a goal of minimizing your losses. That's exactly what you'll get at the end of the day, end of the week, end of the month. You'll have a whole bunch of small losses, which means you'll just bleed slowly. I don't think that's the goal you want to achieve. At some point, 
you have to get good enough to focus on maximizing profits. The second saying that I love is by William Eckhart, not by me. And it says that most new traders go broke by taking huge losses. Most experienced traders go broke by taking small profits. And I can't think of a more true concept from all the people I work with and talk to than just that. It's that fear that sets in, that fear that if you have a losing trade or two, and then you have a winning trade, what do you do? Well, you take the winning trade off the table just about the time you're going to be break even for the day or for the week. Is that correct, everybody? Anybody ever do that? Start off with a losing trade or two, and then here comes your winning trade. And you don't care about the potential of the winning trade, but you just say, well, you know what? If I take it here, I'm even for the day. And if you think about it, if that's what you're doing, you are trading with the hope, with the aspiration to be break even. In other words, that's the best you're going to do. That's your hope is to be break even because that's what you're trying to do. So none of that's going to work. You should have nothing to think about as management is pre-planned, right? You should know how to manage any trade before you get into it. And if there's nothing you can even do for the next two hours, why are you staring at the trade? You have a stop in place. Why not go for a run, go for a bike ride, shoot some golf, whatever you want to do. But why sit there and stare at the trade if there's nothing you're even allowed to do, do to it for a while? Not doing this is exactly what brings in those psycho issues. I just put psycho everywhere, but those, of course, are psychological problems that people have where you're reacting out of your own fear or greed rather than doing what you should be doing. A chart uh, exemplifying management. Now, I wanted to get a long-term trade in here as well. This is the most recent open long-term position. It's a short on MU. And this here on the left is a copy and paste from the letter that goes out to people who subscribe to the long-term trader giving these trades. And MU was a short right there. Now, that's an aggressive entry, right? The second day, it stayed pretty strong, kind of scary. But then after that, it, it, it fell. It fell pretty nicely. And it actually hit a very quick for a long-term trade it hit a very quick target in about four days but what i want to show you here is how is it that you oh did i skip a hang on nope that's on the next slide here's the hourly chart during that decline shorted that we start to fall and the question is that you have to think about is why not take profits here right it was it was up like maybe 1.5 what i risked right there or something like that or one what i risked we're running into the prior low on the daily chart. How do you know to not take that there? How do you know, you know, how many people would take that there? Because you're saying, well, boy, I'm up some money. Let's just take it off the table. Well, that's the problem. If you keep taking cheap little profits instead of the big profits, well, you're never going to compensate for the losses that you're going to have for sure. Everybody's going to have losses. So where does the ability to manage like that come from? Is it all? psychological? Not really, right? I mean, part of, part of it is knowing the chart well enough, right? To have the confidence to say, I think it's going to get to there. And I'm pretty confident of that. So I was pretty confident it would get down to here. And that, that of course, is based on the daily chart here, because this was the first supporter. You can see that right through here. So if you're trading the daily, weekly chart, monthly chart, you're not looking to take profits on the hourly chart and you have to get over that that habit, get over that fear of, of giving back your profits to some extent. Yes, sometimes you do. Absolutely. But if you every if you manage every trade to make sure you don't give back a penny, you're never going to have any decent winners. Now, there's different ways to trade. I, I'm not against a more scalp mentality, but your winners still have to be proportionate to your losers. So you end up making money. And most traders don't do that if they take smaller profits, they, they continue to have losses that wipe out their gains at the end of the day, week, month, whatever it is. Management is, again, I could talk forever about it. There are a couple of presentations on the website about it. I'm running out of time here, so um, check those out. And I can't say enough about management. My, my saying about management is that eventually you will make it or break it as a trader or investor based on your management. Eventually, that's what will determine what you do. Number three, patience. This is the third successful trading concept. Question, is patience more of a psychological issue or a technical issue? Let me ask you guys that real quick. What do you think? Patience, psychological or technical? 
is usually a pretty common answer to this. Psychotech. Psychotech. Both tech, emotional psych, yeah. Well, it is both, right, to a large degree, and maybe more than a lot of people think. If there was a thing the traders in Market Wizards had in common, it was patience. In other words, that book set out to find what traders had in common technically. The answer was nothing. Nobody did the same thing technically, but they all patiently waited for their setup. Waiting for the stock to come to you, waiting for your setup. No FOMO ever. No fear of missing out ever. You, you never sit there and say, oh, I got to chase this because I might miss it. Now, there's times you have to make a decision, an intelligent decision. I'm not sure if it's in the right area. How mad would I be if I took this here and ended up going lower if I was going long? How mad would I be if I wait for it and I miss it? Sometimes it's a tough call, but generally always being afraid of missing things is one of the top reasons traders have a hard time. They're just not patient enough waiting for the area. They're afraid they're gonna miss it. As you all just said, and it's true, most traders stop out of things very soon after entering, which means they got in too early, long or short. Here's an example of patience. This is um, sticks, I call it Seagate, um, three, four days ago. Big gap up. This is gonna gap to right here. See, see where that arrow is pointing? Let me ask you, before the market opens, you see it's gonna gap to there. Is that a long or a short? What do you think? Go ahead. There's about seven or eight of you typing freely. Go ahead, long or short? Long or short? I'll, I'll give you my answer. Well, there's the daily chart. What, what more info do you want? I mean, daily chart, we judge our gaps. I know you can wait for it to open and you know go big one way or the other, but if you were looking at it, what would you do? Long, short, long, short. You know what my answer is? Support at 90? Okay. I'm, I'm not sure what that means, Conrad. We're opening up here at 106. So you're going to go long at 90? My answer is I have absolutely no clue. I have absolutely no clue, no clue whatsoever. How can I say that? Well, I study gaps all the time. I teach gaps as a separate course. I consider myself somewhat of an expert at gaps, but you still have to understand, just like all of technical analysis, a lot of gaps just don't give you a clue. Remember, that stock is opening in perfect balance and harmony. In other words, some people think there's this thing that, oh, a stock is gap, is a stock open somewhere, it's out of balance, and therefore it's gonna go one way or the other, but that's not true. It's the out of balance that makes it open up $6 or whatever this opened up, $10. Once it opens, absent any other information, we don't know where it's going to go. This chart tells me nothing about where it's going to go. It tells me nothing. So I had no long bias. I had no short bias. But here's what I knew. If for some crazy reason, if this thing were to run all the way up to those prior highs on a very strong continuous run, then I would short it because then there's a pattern I understand. Do you guys all see that difference between taking just a piece of crap chart that you have no idea what's going to happen to it and saying, well, I have no idea what's going to happen to you. I'll put you off to the side, but I'll put a little note here. If this thing runs up to here, I'm interested, right? Because then I know it's a short. If it fell, I wouldn't know to ever, it's, it's not a long to be anywhere if it drops, but that gap plus that run, that tired, exhausting pattern into that very tough top up there is going to fall. So that's what I did that morning. There's the red line and there's what it did. It ran up and then it fell tremendously after hitting that area. So five minute chart, it ran up very quickly. It's a five minute chart. It ran up in 15 minutes to make the high. I shorted it, not that aggressively. I waited for one lower high, I shorted it right in there. So number one, it was the patience to wait for that, right? The patience to wait for that. And then number two, Based on this trade, I, cook, I took one quick target, one third of the trade off the table, which allowed me to just now go to sleep. I left. I, I left this day until I got back about 2.15. And about 10 minutes after I got back, it dropped really hard. I took target two, and target three was meant to be end today. So there's a great trade. That's a 4R target two. That's a four times your re, four re, through, <laughs> four times reward to risk on the trade for target number two. Now, here's a big question I want to get across to you. How did I know that was going to run up to 116 or whatever? How did I know that? And this is one of those really great answers to me. How did I know that it's going to run to 116? 
It stops it's right there on the slide. Uh, enters under 114 20 stop over 117. See it up there whoever asked about the numbers on it's right up there. Entry stop and then three different targets, a third each, time that I exited. Boom, boom, boom. Right. I didn't. I had no clue it was going to happen. But guess what? Here's the thing, guys. I don't have this one stock on my screen just sitting there staring at it, waiting, hoping, praying, right? I do a whole list. I go through several stocks every morning. I compile a list of uh, a watch list for the day, and then I compile my favorites, and I put them all on charts. And at any moment in time, like right now, I have about uh, 22 charts up, I'd say, 22 thumbnail charts. And I know what I want to see. So this just happened to be the one, right? It's like, it's like, what are the odds of seeing a license plate KT9027? Well, it's one in 12 billion. But if I see the license plate KT9027, the odds are pretty good. So I have all these charts up and it's the ones that do what I want them to do that I look at. There are some days where nothing really does what I want it to do. I may try and force one trade. I don't have a problem forcing one trade. A week ago, Friday, I had no trades. And there are some days that I can't hit the button fast enough. So it's all a matter of what sets up. But that's the whole point is that this just happened to do what I wanted it to do. So it became a great trade. And if you could all think that way, you know, if you could say, number one, I know the charts well enough to know where the odds are. And then number two, to wait until those odds exist, then bingo. Good talk. Good talk, Rusty. Did that make sense? I'm out of um, time. Aggressiveness is my next favorite thing, but we're not going to go through that. Um, you, you have to be somewhat aggressive. Conclusion, wherever you are, it's up to you. This is a business. You have to learn what you're doing. You have to check to see if you're doing what you should be doing. You have to know if you stray, are you still doing it right? At some point, discipline is between your ears and no trick will work. Hey, did you know at some point that discipline is between your ears and no trick will ever work? The biggest tool to have discipline is to have confidence. Okay, how do you get confidence? Go back to the top of the list, learn what you're doing. Learn what you're doing, trade with limited risk until you get confidence, increase the risk as your confidence grows, that's how you learn what you're doing. Very few people do it right. You should never ever lose any significant money learning to day trade or to long-term invest either way. There's me, nobody cares about that. This was a discussion that was based on a prior event that I did at DTS back on November 17th. If you want to go hear the other concepts discussed some more, you'll hear some of this repeated from what I did today, but if you want to hear the other concepts, go to the free stuff page, Wednesday, November 17th. It's under prior events. It's pretty well organized there. There's there's a trade of the week videos, prior events, all kinds of stuff. Go look for it. If you don't like the website, I also there's also a DTS YouTube site and everything on the DTS website is mirrored on YouTube. They're posted at both simultaneously. Go through YouTube, go through DTS, have fun, look at it all, boom. Those of you who do not know me, if you want to follow DTS a little bit more, discipline trading strategies, maybe Sherry could throw that post out there if she's still awake, if I didn't put her to sleep. Homepage of DTS. Did not put me to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> if you're at the homepage and go to the free stuff page, that's where all the stuff is I'm talking about. Become a DTS member. There's no harm to it whatsoever. Your, your email's not sold or traded or nothing. It's simply, if you become a DTS member, you get sent emails that are educational. You get events to these events that I do. It's all that it is. All You don't have to put your name. You don't have to put anything except make up an email address. Of course, if you want to get the information, you got to give an email address you actually check. But that's all you need is just an email address and just become a DTS member, right? I'm certainly willing to sit and talk. If you go to the free stuff page at the top, you can actually schedule a little 20 minute session with me if you want to talk. Just go over where you where you are, what your plans are. I'll look at some trades with you if you want, just for being a DTS member. Try and help people when I can. Some of those people, you know, go on and try it on their own and maybe they're successful, maybe they're not. Some come back and try and get education from me, whatever it is. Whatever you want to do is good. Are there any questions? That was a great presentation. Well, thank you, sir. Nobody is seconding you though. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Are there any questions? Uh, there any great. questions I yeah. missed? Paul, on average, There's each one. member of DTS takes a small portion of your time. But you, you max number of reserves. You can't, can't come at it. That's a great question, um, um, Joe. One of the reasons I went to do DTS, and Sherry, just cut me off whenever is appropriate. I, I know I'm the last one, but I don't no, like No, no, you're fine. Over. Okay, all right. 
So one of the reasons I went to do DTS when I did was I was going to just kind of, you know, um, just trade for myself. And I had like just the best year ever. And I was like, you know, this is not fun by myself. I could show people this stuff. And one of the reasons I decided to do it was because I just became an empty nester. Yes, I know I don't look it, but yes, I'm that old. My kids left the house a couple of years ago, actually about 45 years ago. And I just have time and it's fun. I enjoy this. And here's the thing. I'd be sitting here trading the morning no matter what. So to open a chat room is no big deal. Every six, seven weeks, I teach on the weekends for a couple of Saturdays, not a real big deal. For the free members of DTS, they email me. And if I have time, I'll get together with somebody in a chat or whatever. Of course, a priority for me are seminar students. And I've never, ever not got back to a seminar student in 24 hours. I mean, maybe it was a real non-emergency. Maybe it was, you know, 48 hours. But I always get back to people, meet with them. I've always had the time. One of the things I do is I kind of limit, I, I've had a couple times where I cut off registrations of seminar program because I just, you know, I, there's not that many, I'm a small company, it's not that many people that sign up. But if I get too many, I'll just say, hey, wait, just wait till next time because I want to make sure I can handle it. I've never come close to being maxed out on time. One of the things is I just, um, who asked this, Joe, I'll call you Joe. I just uh, trade the opening couple of hours. So I'm free and to tell you the truth, I'm almost kind of bored after 11 o'clock. Every day I do some exercise, do fun stuff, go do stuff. So I have all afternoon really to kind of meet with people, to do stuff. I, I'm not even close to maxing out my time. So I appreciate your, your thoughts on that, but not even an issue. Okay. Hey, thanks, Davis. Gary, okay. Oh, we've spoken? Okay. Well, yeah, Gary maybe sounds a with the name you put out there. I don't know who you were, but okay. So not a problem. Anything else, guys? I think that's it. All right. I, I think Sharon gave my email. <clears throat> yeah. Well, no, okay. I didn't give him your email. Yeah, throw that out there a second. Just say hi if they want to say hi or whatever. All right. Tell me again. Buddy, what I'm sure he's going to sign us off. Thanks for having me, Sherry. I'll see you next time. Thanks very much. And uh, guys, go to his go to go to his website. Go to this link. Get your free stuff. Get on his list. You are going to get email from all the speakers who are here today. Paul, it's always a pleasure. I hope you'll come back again. Thanks, and uh, <clears throat> our next event is February 16th. You'll be getting emails. And, you know, obviously, we don't want you to get email you don't want. So it, once you get something, if you feel like it's too much, then just sub unsubscribe. It's not a big deal. But we want you to get this training and to see these strategies. And uh, honestly, our speakers bring their A game and they bring their best deals. And um, everybody's going to make an offer because how else are they going to make money to do the free stuff, right? So um, this is, I just want to say thank you to all my presenters today. Uh, They're really good and much appreciation to you all who have attended. Uh, this is Sherry. And from all of us at Traders Exclusive, we're going to say join us again next time and trade well.